Subscribers on YouTube are going up. That's fantastic. I hope so. Do you know they are? They're going up. Yeah. But I, I, I do need to address an issue early on. Uh, to the people I've been offending, because I feel like I'm the biggest culprit here, we have not been able to keep things PG-13. <laughs> I don't know if we ever will, because we get pretty baked up in the hood. <clears throat> so straight faces are hard. But I'll try and tone it back on the fuck bombs today. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. I, I thought it was last week's guest that was... Um, I thought it was the, the, comp the complaint or the observation was about last week's guest. Really? I think uh, so. That's what it's leveled at, leveled at. But, you know, this is... Evening all... Freedom of speech. Come oh, on, there's a whole bunch of people already joining the yeah, thread. Yeah, we're going to try to chase uh, Sean Alexander. Everyone's coming in hard and fast. Hard and fast. Nice, <laughs> everybody. Stoners inbound. Mm -hmm. uh, folks, welcome to the Hot Cock Show. Tonight you're joined by myself, Buzz, Dad, Mark with the C. Emery motherfuckers, I thought Joe? you were going to turn down the F. Damn! Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'll just have to suppress my CBDs or something with more weed. And Jules, and as always, we'll be talking... Lank Dank! Guys, wow. What a week, eh? What a week well, for oh you God. guys, eh? Yeah, yes. Mark and I have been on the road, but uh, Fields of Green for All's had a hell of a week of all sorts of things in courts and stuff and expos. We'll deal with it all as we go along, but... Uh, Wow, I've been pretty breathless. There's been lots of things going on. So I think Jules should do us justice here, because Jules has always been going on, you know, on my bucket list, one day Mark's going to get out of jail, <laughs> and he's going to come to South Africa, and we're going to go on a road tour. And believe it or not, you guys have spent the last two weeks doing that. I think, Jules, let's start at the beginning. For those who don't know, maybe give us a quick 101 on Mark Emery. Well, Mark Emery's not the person that you actually read in the Twitter feeds. He's a completely different beast. He's one of the most amazing, gentle, <laughs> altruistic people I know. And I've had loads of fun with the guy. And man, can he smoke pot. Yeah. <laughs> uh, those who don't know, Mark's a, a Obali from the day in Canada. That lovely uh, translated means that's old. <laughs> <laughs> but Why is old man? Mark's been busted a billion times. He's done time in that. But I think Mark has probably touched more people's lives than most activists out there because for a long time Mark was best known for selling a bazillion seeds with a very sort of fuck the man but I'll play nice if I can attitude so I think I first heard about Mark Emery in one of these magazines yeah one of my high times magazines that I got back mm. in the 90s skeleton mm. at the CNA that my mommy couldn't see and <laughs> now 20 years later nearly well here uh, we are well and my message has always been uh, on a number of levels and everything's kind of worked out except my general call to legalize cannabis that turns out to have been my big mistake because I don't believe we should ask the government to legalize cannabis I believe our political message should be stop arresting us and leave the rest to us leave our culture to us leave business to us leave our growing to us we don't need regulation and it's intolerable that we would accept any kind of regulation. Specifically, I point out recently on, on every stop I've made in South Africa, that we are not beholden to the people who persecuted us for nearly a hundred years. And in South Africa, that would be a variety of administrations. Uh, yeah. You know, through, through ages, it's been illegal in uh, South Africa more or less since the 1930s. And it's been the government that's been our oppressor. So to let the government regulate our culture, virtually control it, manipulate it, determine the winners and losers, the outcomes, and what's legal and appropriate and what isn't. This is all wrong. All prohibition is wrong in every aspect of it. So to compromise that and say, oh, we're willing to tolerate, you know, in Canada, people are 80% is still in the black market, and that means 80% of the people are still illegal. Otherwise, they would be in the legal market. They, everything would be legal. But if 80% of the cannabis is still being sold as the black market, that means only 20% of Canadians were essentially legalized, you know. And so um, the message here is we're on the cr cr cusp of a fabulous thing in South Africa. It potentially has the best regime for cannabis in the world in the Concord's privacy decision. Oftentimes these things don't become apparent until time down the road. But right now we're seeing a huge burst of ambition and entrepreneurship yes. in South Africa well, I think that's, regarding that's, cannabis. That's, that's actually down to you in the way that you talk to, all the way up the coast. Everyone got so fired up. Because yeah. he, he's got such an insight to what's happening around the world that he can he can gauge yeah, this is the best possible scenario for any country for at least five years. Mexico has a similar one, but 
There's nothing this good anywhere in the world right now, and there's nothing coming this good. There's no other court cases going to be appearing in any other country. I'm aware of almost everything going on, and there's going to be nothing major happening this year of the impact of this constitutional court so anywhere in the world. And the good thing is, Reason just called you and wanted to learn about what's going on. Yeah, right? Reason. That's uh, a big libertarian U.S. magazine, and I think it's because they've been hearing about this, bubbling about this freedom, this whole concept of personal privacy. And I'm sure more media around the world are going to call them and say, well, how is this really impacting? Right, well, it's a human rights issue, and that's, Trudeau never said the word human rights once. No. There's not one, one uh, legislature head or anything in the whole of Canada that said, this is a human rights issue. <laughs> so we, this is all a human rights issue, the privacy thing. But um, as I heard Mark talk and talk for the last nine days, it became a little bit clearer to me how profound this all was mm -hmm. as well, because right now we know that there's an unlimited figure on absolutely everything, and we have to make hay while the sun shines. So uh, Jamie's putting out a challenger. Uh, Jamie was kind enough to host Mark at Rumours last night. Yeah. Uh, Jamie tunes, I want to hear how, Ma how Mark pronounces the Dacha couple. <laughs> <laughs> well, now, you know, in North America, you see two Gs together, you go down. Right? Yeah. But my friend Daniel Larson was my editor of Cannabis Culture for a decade and a good friend and still selling illegally, proudly in Vancouver right now. Well, he's from Cape Town and he used to always go, Daka. Okay. It's almost like some kind of German Yiddish, Daka. So, it's Daka. That's why they did it. It's like a, an Afrikaans inflection of an ancient um, Khoisan word just to make it sound <coughs> bad and vilify. Mm. It's a political So is that word. it? Because I don't know the source of that word. Is that a... Is that a, a Dacha, D-A-C-H. Is that a pejorative? Dacha. Yeah, D-A, yeah, big time. Oh, yeah, no, this is a very negative word. It's absolutely it's like low. low. Is. It has a very similar history, parallel almost to the I development guess. You know of what? marijuana. Marijuana is me, though. I grew up thinking marijuana is a romantic word. All the things they condemned, the sexual promiscuity, the abandonment of morality, mm -hmm. I thought that was the attraction, right? And then there was the humor. <laughs> I smoked. I first smoked pot in 1980. I'm a late bloomer at 22. But wow, I used to play. Really? Tom, but I played Cheech and Chong albums in 1972 when I'm 14 when they came out. Yeah. I thought people who smoked pot were funny, and kids relate to that. So when yeah. Tommy Chong has got his lazy voice and stupid dumb things are happening to him, kids love that, right? Mm, so it. to them, it's even when they try and simulate what getting high is. To them, getting high is getting dizzy when they run around on those little whirly gig things yeah. and they. Run, you know, run out. To them, getting dizzy is like getting drunk, getting high. Yeah, it's a form of it, right? Yeah. So Cheech and Chong were always so lovable. Nobody ever got really hurt. The police, the authority figures were always thwarted. It was so slapstick, right? And such a broad comedy. So I loved stoner humor uh, almost a decade before I would ever smoke pot. So I was ready for it to be like that. Okay. When did you first start smoking weed? Fifteen. And you? Yeah. Yeah. I'm 22. I can't believe 22. you're such a late bloomer. Yeah, but my time was amazing. It was December 21st, 1980, and it was 10 minutes to midnight. <laughs> to the day, to the minutes. But that night I was falling in love, and I was just about to go down on this woman. Oh, no! <laughs> making my moves, and then I look up for that last minute bit of affirmation, and I saw her licking this joint. And I don't even know where that joint came from. But she's licking this joint, she says, before you do that, Come and smoke this. So I get up. She probably sensed I was a little nervous, you know, because basically when you're meeting a new woman for the first time, you're bluffing your way. You're yeah. just hoping whatever you know is going to work, right? <laughs> so anyway, we smoked this joint, and I'm telling you, after half an hour later, I remember the full moon was huge, and that's the last thing I remember about the stars. And the next thing you know, I'm gliding over her labial lips like the no, wind man. of giant <laughs> mandarins. And, and I thought, this fucking weed is awesome. <laughs> right? So I always will have a very positive association with cannabis. Sounds and like that's, it. You know what? The 40th anniversary of that pussy licking is coming up wow. later on this year. <laughs> at, 10, <laughs> at 10 minutes to midnight. We should an track down this point. <laughs> on an arbitrary Wednesday at some point. We should track down this chick and see if she's still open for business. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 40 years down the hatch. Woo so so let's, let's, before we run into extra time so early on, have we got, have we got any dank we should be showing off right now? Um, yeah. yeah, I brought a few bits and pieces from our travel. Mark, how many strains did you actually get given? We got, oh, well, th I smoked 37. Okay. Yeah, I was gifted an awful lot of those. So, <coughs> the best ones were, um, geez, where would I say? I got, we got offerings and gifts and we smoked up everywhere. 
But I would have to say in Pret things are pretty good. Because we had good. some... Uh, 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 Port Elizabeth was great. Some yeah, excellent that was really good. going on there and the, and the pretentious Kush. We, well, whole, we got a whole bag of pretentious Kush. Nobody smoked it before. Really? So well, we I got a desk cam there. On its way. So this is the only thing I've got in the hot box tonight. I've kept this since Tuesday night at uh, Crithy's at the, the dispensary. Mm -hmm. And that there is an Exodus cheese from the valley outside Durban. And it's absolutely chock a block. Nice. It's really, really dense. So that's what we're going to smoke tonight. And we've got a gizmo to actually check things yeah, out. We'll we're going to get, get to that. Yeah. So that I can give there. We can put that I, I'll just let you know, I'm a bit skeptical about the gizmo, so I'm looking forward yeah, to it. Yeah, no, no. Proven wrong. No, no, no. And, what the the gizmo. and the then we've got a... Um, look, at the, look at this. Look at that there. Look at that. How the, there's a, the terpenes are floating to the top. And I wish I could scratch and sniff it. This is, again, another cheese. And it's just like nectar, and we've all had a dab of it. That's why we were quite raucous as this thing started. Thank you. <laughs> what else we got? Well, what else we got is this. This is weird. We're going to have a little talk about okay. that. Is that anywhere? So this is a bottle of Donna Juanita Cabernet Sauvignon. And look at her headdress Ooh, there. Has she got a beautiful headdress? A really great piece of art. But you'll see no, cool there's right. all the chemical formula yeah, behind yeah, it. And when yeah. you turn it over, Look what the hell's in this cabinet. Well, the right, big bird, critical, astro cream, cream, queen, and there's two <laughs> grams per 750 milliliters. Two grams of what? Yes. Oh, exactly, my brother. If it's two grams of dead, we get fucked up tonight. Yeah, yeah, it says when it's derived from that one. We don't know if it's. Uh, so, um, we're going to give that a little bit of a go, but um, I don't know, alcohol and weed all in the same thing? Mm. Let's have a because whenever bad things happen right. because of the alcohol, the weed will get blamed. That's the big risk with alcohol and cannabis infusion. There's going to be trouble, and people will get the cannabis will be blamed for the stupidity of the things people do on the alcohol, right? Undoubtedly. Yeah. So That's a good point, actually. It's a very good point. Well, I see. I, I just don't know how people could put the two together in one, in one thing. Have a glass of wine and a beer or something. But I don't know. It's it's, it's not going to end well. I don't think it's going to it's going to end great for people's <coughs> bank accounts. There, that that headline there. A B in Bev. That is basically right. SA breweries. Yeah. And they, they're looking it all the way down the line. They are, in fact. Mm. Cool. So let's get on to the poll this week. So I don't know about you guys. I've got some thoughts on this. Uh, are any of you guys at home suffering from the Cannabis Expo blues yet? <laughs> and when I say this, are you a little bit just like, fuck me, another Cannabis Expo? Come on. So the options are, I've got chronic Cannabis Expo blues. Or, I'll expo her a day. Because maybe some of you guys are loving it. But at the moment, for like the last couple of months, it has just been expo <coughs> and convention and in Darba after each other. And I'm starting to get a bit burnt out. It's losing its fun for me because there's just so many expos. Oh, you side. miserable old git. Come on. <laughs> Come on. Really? Um, um, <coughs> so in our year voting, you'll go to expo her a day. Her day. And I'll talk for 15 hours and I'll give everyone a dab like it was the very first one of the day with a smile on my face. I need to ask a question. How many of the expos have you been to? Absolutely not yet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you haven't, folks. I actually haven't, but if I told you how many expos I have done that isn't actually anything to do with Fields of Green related, I, I, I've paid my dues in three by three shells. I know what four days of that shit is like with the general public. But what I do, what I do see about it is it's really cool to network the stalls. Mm. Mm. If you're selling something, it's shit because nobody's going to them because they put so much money on the entrance fee. Have you got a, have you got a price to get into 420 <coughs> at all in Vancouver? It's a free thing. No, right? it's free there. So you see, they get 40,000 people because it's free. And then last what week... What is it, though? Like a dispensary? Oh, D-Day, 420. Oh, D-Day. 30, yeah, 40, get, we'll get 100,000 people in the day, what? but 40... Forty to fifty thousand one time at four twenty, but there'll be. Can you? Can you well, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and yeah. I'm going to be there this year. You're going to be my twenty fifth yeah. anniversary in Vancouver, and then I'm going to be in what uh, they call J Day in Australia and New Zealand. But I won't be there because I couldn't get. I was not admissible to enter Australia, having done a close to six years in prison. So I'm going to be in Costa Rica and oh, wow. uh, San Jose at their global marijuana march in the first weekend of May. Uh, we'll nice. okay. Cool. Nice. Have, you, have you done Costa Rica yet? No, nope, never seen the place. Okay. And how's your Spanish doing? Well, my Spanish could be better, but normally 
a lot of people who speak Spanish also know some English. I suppose if you're dealing with labial lips all the time, Spanish, you know, like Spanish doesn't really have to come into that, does it? <laughs> so I just wanted to say labial. <laughs> you, don't, you just don't get a chance. You, you know, you know, speaking of, but here's the thing. Speaking of Spanish, labial to them is these lips. So you buy cream, it's labial cream or toothbrush. You know, toothpaste has got labial on it there. So it's only fun in English. It's, it's only fun in English. So it's you like pussy in the morning. So guys, please add the polls on Facebook and YouTube. It's either up there or up there or something like that, maybe down there. Are you guys a bit book of the expo? No, or well, you'll do that shit all day. Personally, I'm a bit burnt out by it, but also it's been a bit of a gig thing. Joe, you've been to everyone? I've been to all of them so far, and you know, they are tiring, but I really enjoy networking with people and meeting people yeah, no, but you're great to at doing that. see but I'm super bad with putting names and faces together I'm terrible with names like never ever take offense I don't remember names but I'll remember your face so I've uh, just everyone is a better opportunity to try and remember a face to a name and yeah just meet people and so many ideas out there so you're still good so right? it's exhausting but it's a mind fuck exhausting because there's so much. It's like info, 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 and giving info, info, info. So can you guys but smoke like pot and do dabs at that expo? Mm. At the the most recent one, we could. The the first one, we couldn't. And, okay, and so community protest. Okay, that, well, but get, support then you'll get more people if you can smoke inside. If that word gets yeah. out, you'll get a lot more next time. Well, this last one was outside. It was oh, beautiful. Better. It Perfect. was the yeah. cannabis expo everyone's been asking for, and nobody like pitched nobody up. came. Yeah, of course, okay, so... Stop, dude, there was plants, there was everything. You rolled it. Everywhere. Yeah. Okay, what do you attribute that to? Uh, well, it was the same entrance fee as the first one. Maybe the first one was so well attended because it was the first one. Hmm. The second one was badly advertised. Uh, it didn't uh, have half the clout as the first mm. one. It was somebody who hadn't actually done it before, and he was putting his best foot forward and trying to just... It was beautiful. It was so beautiful, and I really wish that the community had yeah. supported it, big, it actually, big, because it big. was, it was the, the expo everybody wanted after the first one. It was outside. We had fresh air. Here's footage of it. Smoking. Here's footage of it here. There we go. So, for you guys at home, this was the Grow Up Expo. This was in Santa this weekend gone by. It was for three or four days or whatever. Um, private venue and that. So the tickets, I think, were what, 200 bucks each? I think it was 200 bucks entrance. And I'll be real with you, it was more like a flea market than an expo. The the original expo we went to in Pretoria. Much more business, yeah. Very busy, about 10,000 people. I'd be very surprised if this was even like three or 4,000 people over the weekend. So it was a lot more spread out, a lot more toned down, but nowhere near as busy. But like you say, they had, you could smoke weed, you yeah. could smoke dabs. There were weed plants there, which yeah. they weren't allowed at the other expo. And there were also people selling CBD and THC products. I fucking ate every edible handed to me because I wasn't smoking. So I just went, rah, 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 yeah. and it was a great day. <laughs> I got completely wasted without smoking a thing. I didn't need you to. You know, you could probably do that every three months. The flea market is a good way to look at it. A too. monthly market. A cannabis flea market. Uh, a monthly one or every three months just mm. to make it sure that everybody was right. But you should only charge about a hundred rand a day. It's yeah. about twice as much as it should be at 20. I reckon. Yes. Yeah, no, it has yeah, it's not like you're Spanibus and you've got this pull of 20 years and you're mm. the biggest in the world. I don't think it's, you know, 20, 200 rand equivalent in, for Spanibus, mm. right? And that's the number Isn't one. Is it 40 thing. euro? Not for one day. For no, three, no, 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 for, for one three. day. He's at Spanibus next week. Oh, yeah, it's not 40 oh. euro. Right, let's have a quick look here. But the best expo of all that you should always go to once in your life that's incredible, it's like a party every 10 meters um, for the whole expo, is Expo Weed in, in Santiago, Chile. Okay. Normally Chile. the Chileans are pretty mellow, laid back, not excitable people. This expo is like a nonstop party. Hmm. Everybody's doing dabs and bong hits and joints and they're smoking you up at every place. They're like really, and they have disco going uh, everybody's got a dj about every like i say every 10 meters a new dj about 25 to 30 it's like just a non-stop party I, that is the wow. greatest expo in the world and canada has the worst expos in the world because <laughs> they, they don't let you smoke at them anymore you can't do any dabs so there's nothing fun. fun going on everybody's in suits and they're all networking to make millions and millions of dollars with whatever scam or crappy corporate weed they've got yeah. going on and so within the space of like five years Canada went from having the greatest potential to the worst reality so I'm hoping you're one stay grassroots because yeah. once everybody starts and, and that they smoke more next time 
Mm. And and also, Expo uh, Weed in Santiago gets huge number of people. So just keep it up. Mm. That guy was on the right track there. Well, he did say that he even whether he made money or not on this one, he's definitely going to do it again next year. He well, people say that it. until the bills finally it. count. You know, right when they've done the finals. Yeah, it was his but first I, one. So and then you go, why should I put in all this fucking effort in and do a great job when you're going to uh, try so um, try come in Cape Town says they're all up north at the moment, but uh, at seventh of April, aren't we down there? We going down for the cannabis, mm -hmm. uh, the Cape Town uh, cannabis. Expo. Two weeks before D Day. And even D-Day, there isn't a D-Day anywhere else in the country. Everyone's a bit m miffed that we have this massive smoke -thon outdoor party every year. But we can't put on a party in every city and be there. That would be like Live Aid or something. You know? <coughs> Don't remember Get when a helicopter go to each gig for 420. <laughs> <laughs> hey, listen, besides, it's up to people to take the initiative. They will. Yeah. You know, they're only getting used to this new reality. People really don't understand how much they can push it and what the pushback might be. Yeah. And the pushback could probably be different in different areas to different people, as we know, mm -hmm. of different statuses different, and different place and time. That's Some people it. might not care if you have a rally and see, but other people might be really annoyed or police might be annoyed or... It be very depends how much obvious selling is going. It depends if some 12-year-old kids end up in the hospital. <laughs> Any number of things could influence public reaction. Yes. Andre Duplessis is watching. Oh, okay. Andre. Yeah. Andre. 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 I know we couldn't get to you because we ran out of time, Andre, but if you've got a question for him, I'll... And he came up a lot. <laughs> he came up a lot. He brought you up all the time. He came brought, up a lot. I brought, I brought you up all the time. Told the story about how he gave me that weed, or didn't give me that weed, <laughs> at the airport, and <laughs> said, uh, listen, the new law is that, you know, you can take this on the plane, but... Still your own risk. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, I, it's always a but, yeah. But, it's again, that that, but, but I want, that was great. I've demonstrated firsthand to myself, because normally I'm very nervous getting on planes with weed, but I felt, okay, this is still my private space. It's sealed away. I have a reasonable expectation of privacy, as I know the constitutional court decision. At worst comes worse, I even have my medical certificate. But I felt reasonably confident here that I don't necessarily feel in other places. In Colombia, dogs stopped me twice in Cali and Bogota. And they detected I had small amounts of weed in my suitcase. I was still allowed to keep it. But, you know, I'm used to dogs stopping me. I've had about five dogs stop me, and I've got weed in. And it's never been a problem, because those dogs don't discriminate guys with 25 pounds and those with just yeah. a souvenir of a place I visited, which is not uncommon, right? True. So um, it was nice to get weed the second I arrived in South Africa, almost as fast as Jamaica. Did they arrive and before your luggage? <laughs> oh no, they were there, they were there waiting for me, and they just gave me that, and we drove in around the parking lot, and smoked a few joints in that car, got out, and got on, and it was fine. And then as soon as I got to Cape Town, those trichoma guys gave me that beautiful box full of everything, <laughs> and just in time, because then they get busted a few days later. So I'm uh, the last major recipient of very <laughs> great stuff. And it was, but you know what? That guy's going to succeed. Yes. Whoever is in charge of that trichoma, well, that guy has good taste, a great business sense. And he, he's got it all. Whatever he's telling you, it's not hype. It's right in that box. Everything he did was great. Yes. Everything was beautifully done. The chocolates were beautifully molded. They tasted great. They were the right strength. It was the, the, it was the green lolly that did it, huh? Well, I took it with me, and then it was that other, but there was that other couple. <laughs> and you know them. Yeah. People warn me, Mark, you got to watch out for that yeah, couple. No, that Their stuff is loaded. It's like a 200 mic fucking <laughs> yeah, brownie or something. Like, he greened out. Oh, I did. Uh, I, but I knew I would. I said in advance. I, I said, guess. listen, I'm just going to keep eating everything that comes towards me today. <laughs> so you know, and then I'm doing dabs, bong hits, joints. I'm smoking everything that's coming, every chocolate, bro, every and, and then at 10 o'clock, yeah, okay, now I feel that cold ridge of sweat <laughs> on your thing. And I even just announced out loud, I'm going to be sick. <laughs> so right, you reach for the CB. But I also know it's going to be about 10, 15 minutes. It's got a process. I'm going to feel more and more uncomfortable. Mm. And I'm going to feel kind of dizzy. And I'm going to start really perspiring right and then but the thing that came is and it's funny somebody told me a story similar to this is that uh, Rudy did um, about somebody gave me put a little bit of that TH or no CBD concentrate on my finger yeah. and I looked like that and as soon as I did that as soon as it was on my tongue I threw up <laughs> <laughs> and I would throw up for the next hour nonstop, about five or six times now fortunately <laughs> the ground this was a trench town I'm embarrassed that's like a pot 250 pot people there only to see me getting, you know, greening out. But uh, but anyway, it was easy to cover up anyway. And, uh, you know, it lasted an hour. I got home, lay down on the bed, and I was good to go two hours later. So 
when I when I, I drove down to Plet to meet Mark, who just left Cape Town, when I walked into our hostess's lounge in this big sprawling farmhouse, there was three bongs on the table, <laughs> small, <laughs> medium, and large. And he'd already put a big hole in the first bong, and that's how I met him. He was like he'd been looked as if he'd been there a week <laughs> doing, doing bongs. I thought, oh my god, what have I let myself in? Because I'm kind of lightweight, sort of. I can do loads of dabs, but I can't do a bong. I'm a gibbering idiot on a bong. It's the it's the Howard Marks effect. But he writes about well, that. Here's the thing, though. It's a good thing I do overdose, right? And I'm rather like. I'm, obvi I'm out there, I'm trying everything, no matter how bad. People criticize me, all the pot snobs on Facebook and Instagram, saying, why are you smoking that schwag? And to them, 90% of it's schwag. But I, I, point out, I smoke everything. Whatever any ordinary person would encounter in life that's smokable to do with cannabis, or however they would smoke it, whether it's in a coconut, mm. or it's a gravity bong, in a in bathtubs, off somebody's back. No, I haven't done that. <laughs> yeah. So um, I, do, I do have a question. <laughs> How would we do this? Yeah. No, I'm talking but, about it. And I have overdosed 14 times. So sometimes I hear people say you can't overdose on pot. No, you definitely can. You can't fatally overdose, and this is a very important caveat. But you can definitely do too much cannabis, and that was the 14th time in my life. That I have done too much and I have gotten sick and it's the exact. All four did them all. all four, oh, I can tell you stories about all 14. Because <laughs> you don't intend to get sick. That was probably the most cavalier I've ever been in Cape Town. I said, basically, I never said before, oh, if I get sick, I get sick. I don't really care. I only know it'll, it'll last an hour or two and it'll be miserable, but whatever. Right? I may, I've got to sample all these things people are throwing at me. Even this wine. I have no idea. This wine could poison us for all I know. No, no, but we should drink some. some. No, no, that's not the problem of wine. I've got a question, though. So, so now you go on all these cool road trips. And you go here and you go there yeah. and you go everywhere. So you get to a point now where all these people have given you a bazillion seeds and a bazillion No, actually that only happens in South Africa. Really? really? You guys have given me more seeds and weed than the previous 25 countries combined. Oh, 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 yeah. All of you. Go Bafana, Bafana. All of you, all of Latin America and the Caribbean combined haven't equal as much pot as I've just seen come given to me in South Africa in two weeks. So what happens to all this weed now when you leave? Oh, well, I've smoked it. Yeah, we did a great job of having the answer. Even the seeds. Did you smoke the seeds? No, no here's, what, here's what happens though. The, the deal with those seeds is they kept coming and going. People would give me seeds and then I would trade them seeds. So almost everybody who gave me seeds also was collecting <coughs> seeds. So there was this back and forth going. And I've, I've got, I've convinced these... Uh, kids in Grahamstown to start a seed bank so I gave them two of everything and you know they just going PE the night before <laughs> yeah and so and then everywhere I've gone people are looking for seeds and they have seeds and that's why there's room for probably 20 so or so seed banks in South Africa that would be fully viable um, I was talking to a gentleman today that envisions having a clone factory producing 50,000 clones mm -hmm. a month there's only one place in the world I know that does that. It's in Vienna called Flowering <coughs> Fields. And it's an incredible thing. It's a, it's a clone factory. Austria has, Austria has the weirdest law. You can have any yes, number yes. of cannabis plants <laughs> in veg, but you can't have them in flowering. No. So it's meanwhile, they're selling 50 it, And so to me, does, everybody must know what's going on with these 50,000 every month yeah, where do they in go? veg. They, oh, yeah, I know. So, so it's this big hypocrisy in Vienna. I don't know who they Literally think they're Literally, you can fooling. buy clones from a store. And because it's the EU, you can drive there from Germany, France. And, you know, most people don't encounter checkpoints. I remember one of the great things that's going to happen is when I go to Spain, I'm going to buy all my weed in Barcelona and then go to Paris, where you can't find weed anywhere. Right? And it's so, and it's because the train, there's no customs or immigration on the way from Barcelona to Paris or anywhere in okay. the European Union. So that is the most awesome place to bring weed to. I had a guy actually deliver weed, came, got in an airplane in Copenhagen and flew down to Athens. And that proved to me that they don't care about any of the things within even the European Union mm -hmm. as far as cannabis goes. Because he brought it to me. And like uh, countries over, and he just got off, I gave him money, and then he got back on the plane. I took my week to Europe last time. But we're going to talk about yeah, this Yeah, that's now, interesting, though, because you're coming into the European I'm coming into So you're going through at least a immigration. But There's no immigration once you're in there. Andre Duplessis was saying uh, he worked yeah. in a clone shop in the USA, which shipped 2,000 clones a day. Jeez. Oh, my goodness. Boy. Yeah, he was good volume. Right. And he also says, and while Mark and I... Well, it's is 50,000 a month, yes. so how much is that every day? Like, like 1,500, 1, 1,600 a day? He also says, while Mark was putting the weed in his bag, we got stopped by the cops right outside the airport. Oh, 
You would Did Andre say that? Yeah. Oh shit. <laughs> <laughs> Smooth news. <laughs> it's a while back. back. How long ago is that? How long have you known Andre? Oh, uh, 1998. He found me the same way everybody else here did in the old days. It, by the magazines, one right. or two showing up in a used bookshop, or, or as uh, Jeremy says, in the kilo bunches. Yeah. And so yeah. all the <laughs> magazines nobody bought in <laughs> kilo bu bunches for like, a, you know, 100 rand or something, some ridiculous price, right? Sure. Or cheap. Yeah. That's how it was. Yeah. It was dark days here. We were very oppressed. But let's get into our next bit. So we were talking a little bit about the Cannabis Expos. The reason I bring them up is there, there was an interaction that came up this week from Tapelo. So Mark and for folks at home who don't know, Tapelo is a very active, a very active activist. Uh, he cares not just about weed. I think he cares about many human and social rights issues. But he, I think he expressed his blues about the cannabis expo scene this week. So I'm going to preamble this. I'm not going to get into the race thing. I'm not going to enunci enunciate the the race words like strongly here. So just <coughs> read it as you will. It's on his Facebook page. It's publicly. What Tapelo tried to do is organise. An expo in Soweto that's literally happening this week. Oh, that's weekend. coming now. I'm meant to be. Sp I'm speaking there. I think I'm meant to be there. Yeah. So the deal with that though is they literally organised this two, three weeks ago at best. So the thing is, this this thing sounds like it's a bit of a fail. I'm not going to say it's a fail. It's not a place to, but he he made this post on Facebook, and he tunes hashtag three day to go. If I may ask, why are all those companies were in expo has failed to buy even one stand? In the marijuana friendly in Darba. Is this how IKS groups are dealt with by our fellow white monopolies? Please help if you can. If not, no problem. But most of us are hurt by this behavior. During apartheid, it was no blacks. And today is rich only. Discrimination by class is crime to humanity. This post has nothing to do with racism. So don't bring all your racial slurs. But focus on exclusion of IKS communities through payment fees. And then he says, today UNISA is holding a thing. But I think he seems to be a bit bummed out ooh, that he said, I'm having this thing and people didn't flock to jump aboard. To buy stands. Yeah. And, and, and tickets or anything. Yeah, right, well, yeah, look, I heard about it three weeks ago. And then four days later, I went away for two weeks. And then the rest is history. And um, to put one of these things on, you really do have to spend six months marketing yeah. it. I was going to say even more. Expo MetaWeed in, in Medellin, Colombia, that guy was peddling his ass for three years at Spanibus before. Like, it's coming in two years. Like, it was like a long, he needed right. to build it up. Because everybody thought, Colombia. Mm. Well, this is, this is based in but Soweto. It's the first one of its kind. First one. I think it's the first one. Must be. First and one. then... Um, the indigenous knowledge systems are there. They've got quite an itinerary. They've got a very interesting part of the itinerary about the tr a, a Truth and Reconciliation Commission, just like we had the TRC for, for, <coughs> for apartheid in general. Mm. He's, he's offering up the, is the issue of having a TRC for all of the people that put the people away for all of those years for just upholding the law. The judges, the police, what about the police that beat the shit out of people to within an inch of their lives yeah. and they're old men and have got a conscience? Let it all come out. Let's have this reconciliation commission. I kind of like that idea. And if they do do this reconciliation, it'd be a good way for the government to say uh, thank you, you know? Yeah. So, there is, this being so there is that. But the, the part about we, we as, I don't know, a, a white community didn't jump on his bandwagon and buy stalls and stuff is we can't <coughs> afford to. Well, he's offering the same deficit this expo did. This expo has clearly lost money, the one we were just they talking did. about. And that fellow probably has the same, where is everybody? Yeah. We've, um, <coughs> can you imagine getting a crew of four from, from Joburg to Cape Town for four days to do the expo in Cape Town? That's a major mission for four Fields of Green. We're going to do it, but we've been saving up hard for months and months. Mm. We've known about it since sort of July last year. Yeah. So to do, to do the Soweto thing, I'm sure it will be a success. But he's wanting to know where's all the white people that were at the expo there, because all of they, all of they folk, were at the expo in Samson or in Menlin. So they they've been coming to the white show, but why aren't the white people going to the black show? But I, I think I, it's a lot to do with marketing as well. It's, it's I didn't even know about it. No, but yeah, I know it today. So I, mean, <laughs> uh, I feel like we're getting like. Getting hung up on black and white, yeah. I'm not yeah. going to no, not at all. No, I, I, more about I hear what he's saying, marketing. though. Yo, you, Dan was saying it. Uh, it's more about the marketing. Well, they, uh, need to uh, least, they need to understand this is their first time. This is their first one. They can't now give everybody 
beef because no one's jumped on the bandwagon. Prove yourself and show that you can do a, a reasonable event that people are wanting to come to. I mean, it doesn't, no one jumps onto the bandwagon with anything at the moment. Some people will, but not. What's their admission price? We don't know. I'm not sure. So this is, this is my it. argument. No one knows anything about this. It was three weeks ago <coughs> we're doing this. Um, there's been no advertising. There's been no word of mouth. I'm not sure these Oaks have even reached out to the storeholders. I think it was a case of, I'm having an expo, and Oaks would just come flocking and beat down the door for stores and shit, um, which isn't happening. He's, he, uh, he sent me a message personally to say the same thing. Um, I said, uh, I'll think about it, because I was. But now, with, uh, I don't know, Fields of Green is a little bit expoed out. It's quite a thing all the time. Crews giving up their weekends to volunteer to do this stuff. They've got lives as well. I'll go along. I'm sure I'll be there. I've got a funny feeling I'm meant to be speaking. But I haven't landed yet because I've been with this guy for nine days. And to keep up with this guy for nine days takes seven days of practice. And then you cruise in a bit. It's cool. After seven days, there's no pain. It's like you do whatever now. It's like being stoned. As, it's like perpetual. So I'm just coming down after a long, hard drive with Prince of Pot, which has been one of the coolest things I ever did as an activist. So, I see it's coming up in the chat a bit. <laughs> yeah. uh, I see we haven't got it linked anywhere yet because it's all just kind of been announced this week. But apparently Cape Town Cannabis March is happening again. Oh, Juanita put it up. Global. Yeah. Yes. Who's Excellent. organizing it? Juanita said it's her, it comes up as Juanita's March. Yes. Okay. Yes. Hey, well, tell Juanita, I should tell her. Get a GoFundMe page so people like me can kick in a hundred bucks. And yeah, no, that's else. a cool idea. Yeah. You know, get a GoFundMe page. Anything you get is more than what you've learned. So she should do that and seek out as much. There's a lot of activity going on in Cape Town, so get as many people sponsoring and as possible. They all want to be part of the new cannabis economy in their own little way. So um, There's a comment here it's, uh, about the expos. Is there's com there are companies out there like us, this is Jacques, trying to keep track of everything that is actually happening all at once. It's all where it, it's like bursting open, mm -hmm. and it's, it's, it's all of a sudden happy. there is competition for weekends for weed. <coughs> if there are different venues for different things, all of, all ready. Yeah. yeah, because the 23rd also is the DQ Central Triathlon uh, finals as well. Okay. So they're having a whole function. Thing That's up in Pretoria on. somewhere, yeah. Yeah. Pretoria yeah. North or something. However, yeah. we should talk this Soweto Expo up, though. Yeah. I mean, yeah, we've absolutely. linked it. I think yeah. Yeah. No, no, I've, I've shared it. Extended. It's been shared by the Ducker couple. Yeah, but uh, you can no, only you share so much because it's so much. Three weeks? No, it's this weekend. It's this weekend. Oh, wow. wow, yeah. See what yeah. I mean? So, um, oh. we're just having this discussion now. Yeah. Remember, we we remember when we went to oh. Arptwak? We yeah. went to the tw Arptwak's um, gig at the diving school thing yes. there. How long ago is that? That's um, how long I've known about it. A month? Three weeks. Three weeks. Is it only three weeks since three I did weeks. that? <laughs> Time and space yeah. as elongated. The N2 is about 12 years long. <laughs> cool. So, <laughs> <laughs> so, guys, please remember to uh, vote in the poll. Uh, have you got the Cannabis Expo Blues? Or will you still expo her a day? Uh, we'll do the results at the end of the show. To so, uh, move on to our next bit. Just the last, last shot. Mark's doing Spanabis this weekend. Yeah. One of the biggest in the world, 38,000 people. Um, I did a, I did a, um, uh, uh, a, a time lapse of the sublimator stand yes. up <laughs> here of this guy handing out dabs for about six hours straight, at the, at the right all the way through the morning session, and I've got this time lapse video that, of a guy. It, it's so fast the time lapse that he takes the dab and just drops. Mm -hmm. He does. <laughs> he and that, that, I'm actually terrified that exists on video, mm -hmm. because I'm telling you, I'm so. <laughs> it doesn't. It's only a number of times I have helped. Uh, accommodate some with cannabinoids and only to see them green out. But this guy literally went wobble and then went <laughs> bang <laughs> and just dropped like a stone and then was up 20 seconds later, <laughs> not really feeling real like around. I couldn't believe it. My eye, I, in fast motion, my eyes pop out and then go back in because, uh, whoa. Too funny. So, guys, you'll catch us at the Cannabis Expo. That's the first weekend of April. Uh, I think maybe all of us will be there. Uh, maybe a special episode. We'll see. I don't want to overpromise, but we'll all definitely be there. Yeah. So if you want to come make me blush, take a selfie, that's cool. We can do that too. Guys, <laughs> <laughs> well, the photos. <laughs> Dick pics, not included. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, guys, um, please, if you can do the Soweto thing, you know it's tough. 
it's just like you say, it's a mile a minute. There's so much going on, it's hard to just keep track of it all. So what we're going to do is, I think since we've got Mark here, let's have a little bit of a uh, ask Mark anything. Well, there, Quinita's, a, Quinita's online. Yeah. So well, guys, say, what, 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 what's your name? What's your name? So I'm going to leave you Oaks at home to drive this next bit with you Oaks here because I'm about to smoke the joint to get high. Come on, we need questions. Bring yeah, them in. Ask Mark, what's past, the strongest past. strain he's ever smoked? Has he ever pissed himself? Well, I saw, I, wait, I, saw, I saw a question <laughs> earlier. I saw a question earlier. There was someone that asked you, Mark, what is the, what is your best country or best town in South Africa so, long, so far? Well... I look at a town in several ways. My experience is always positive, so I liked everything. I never saw wind like I did in Port Elizabeth. That place is howling. But my hairline looks so much better with all the hair flying around. <laughs> I looked about 10 years younger, so I'd be thinking of things like that if I lived in South Africa. <laughs> now, I didn't think Cape Town would be, and the area would be so deserty. It always was a frightening desert. It's like if you were to film the Man on Mars movie, it would be done around Cape Town, right? <laughs> Because it kind of looks forbidding at times. Especially when we went into the Aguila private game reserve and there's two animals. It's like he's building an ark somewhere and he's got two of everything to load up on the ark. But at least he's got the big five and then the scary five, right? And all the major ones. But I felt bad for those elephants and tigers and lions because there's nowhere to hide in there. There's not a tree for, for... I couldn't see a tree anywhere, right? I could just see, like, desolation. Right? I need, can I need to what? say... say don't talk. Don't talk. <laughs> yeah. Don't talk. I, I had occasion to say that too, actually. <laughs> I, I knew somebody was talking shit, so I just said that don't talk. Cock. <laughs> Next question. Okay. <laughs> what is your favorite strain? Well, I and I, it's the most common question I'm ever asked. Mm, I'm now sure. here's the thing: a favorite strain would really be just that strain grown by somebody and given to me in that moment, mm. and I'm you know. Your set and setting influences how high you get to and all the different things, right? Beautiful day, wonderful people, you know, great food. You, that weed is awesome, right? Because everything's going so good. But the reality is, it doesn't matter. It's only about the grower. A great yeah. grower makes mm. everything fucking awesome. Yeah. Everything he touches turns out amazing. And a mediocre grower can render even the best strains to, huh. Eh. You know, especially in the curing, drying, and, and everything post-harvest. The flushing, all that stuff. Everybody can get pretty decent buds after a while, you know, how to pound it with nutrients and mm -hmm. have lights. And most people neglect the air circulation. Um, that's the chief deficiency of most amateur indoor operations is not enough good airflow or not enough CO2. Um, but I've seen some very sophisticated stuff in South well, Africa. Well, that's basically the next question. What's your, what is your favorite, hydro-organic? Oh, well, I don't really care. Um, actually, <laughs> you'll get you'll get m more flavonoids come from organically fed cannabis, and you don't need to flush organically grown cannabis. It's not going to retain too many potassium salts. But I will tell you this: uh, the frostiest nugs I ever see all the time, 100%, are always indoor, and they're almost almost synthetic nutrients. Mm -hmm. You're just not going to get the incredibly hyperbolized results mm -hmm. that. Pounding with salt and then flushing them well <laughs> at the end is going to get you're just going to get prodigious amounts of resin. There's no way around it. But it costs money and requires expertise and it's sensitive. In those kind of controlled environments, when something gets out of hand, it can destroy your crop a lot quicker than I saw s uh, some outdoor c crops today. Mm. And the great thing about outdoor with winds and sun and good weather is you can contain most any kind of problematic situation. Mm. But indoors, it's much harder to contain them. Sure. I've seen people. Sure whole crop wiped out because of a yes. pH imbalance yes, in yes. the water. But that's not going to happen when you're in pots with no. soil. Well, that's much more that. forgiving. That environment, you can do a lot of shit, and you're still going to recover and have something to mm -hmm. smoke. But in indoors circumstance, you could... you got to keep your shit I clean. actually saw some with indoor thing, and their whole room, I got... I, oh, this is a bad admission. What happened is they had an electrical failure, and all the wiring went up in smoke. It got oh, overheated. Shit. And so you go in, and all along where the wire was, it's black. Oh. And all the weed turned black, oh. right? All the smoke. And so I'm looking at it, and I'm going, do you, do you think it's still okay to smoke? <laughs> <laughs> I did. Oh, and so I tried it, and I, and I was kind of getting high, and it didn't taste too contaminated. But then I said, why am I doing this? Because like this, they're not smoking it. They said, no, the whole room is written off. We have to redo it. And everything's black. And I, and I, but I'm looking at it and going, but it kind of looks good. It it looks good. She said it. it was only two days away from harvest. I know, and it looks so good. Black so, leaf. So, oh, yeah, yeah. Black uh, so good question, Al. Hein, Hein McLeod wants to know, did you try the biltong? I did. I like biltong. I got to really, at first I thought, there's a lot of salt in this meat. Um, but I enjoy, eventually, when you chew it, 
mm. you know, and it's kind of, and of course it comes in a lot of different flavors, there's a whole built on businesses and what have you, so yes, yes. I did. And we had that on our road trip, we had a classic South African road trip, really. Pretty good, wasn't it? Yeah, we saw everybody yeah. and every kind of person. And yeah, every I, 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 you know what? I cannot recall in my whole life if I have ever been to a place with no electricity, no running water, no cell phone reception, no roads, yeah. right, and no infrastructure of any kind. I, I'm thinking, I may never have been to a place like this before, and it was kind of magical. It was a beautiful day for me. It was a long day. Yeah, it was a long day. 40 k's out of Lesiki Siki on dirt, then four hours walk over a, through a river. That was unexpected. Up to our knees, barefoot through the pebbles. Oh, you see, if somebody would have told me, oh, Mark, there's a good 50 meter wide river we're going to have to wade through, could be up to your waist. And it's actually moving pretty quick, so, you know, it's sort of dangerous. You know, and, and then we have to go five hours in the blazing sun. I would have said, no. It's got to be a local hotel. Right. This was the, the withholding of your information. Right. Right. But, but right. I've had all my best adventures when the people who were taking never told me the truth. And St. <laughs> Vincent, it was just going to take an hour or two. It took an hour by boat to get to the river. And then we climbed, you know, all this sort of stuff. I, you know, I'm throwing up at the top of the mountain. I'm swearing at them for not telling me these truthful things. But then they're all my best days, right? Yeah. So, I, and listen, if you're going to take me anywhere arduous in the world, we're going to see we don't tell me the Just truth. take me. Don't <laughs> tell me the truth. Don't lie to me. Just lie to me. Mark, it'll be no problem. So we've got questions queuing up here. Yeah? Jacques asked a very good one. He says, is there anything about South African Canada Cannabis culture that has stuck out with you. Um, hmm. It's this new court decision has made everybody way more relaxed. I can tell. I've never been here before, but people are just too casual and calm about all the <laughs> weed they're growing or doing. Everywhere I go, black, white, Indian, Durban, you know, anywhere, people are just comfortable talking about weed in a kind of an open way now. That's got to be new. That's, that's not, doesn't come from a Is society it new, though? of prohibition of 50 years. Most people are a little more cautious. If, if they have any th thought that the cops are coming, they would have acted differently than mm. they have in the two weeks I've been around. Not a single person I met acted like they had any reasonable expectation of the police coming. And the one guy who had the uh, cannabis shop that he closed for a few days because the guys in George said they're coming for him next, yeah, he didn't look particularly worried. He was still going to open up in three more days. Right? He's just going to let him calm down for three days and then he was going back to business. He didn't look like he was he, that he actually sent me a message this morning. He's opened for business under his own name. He's walked away from Canapax as a as a, as a franchise, man. as a complete yes. entity. Just do his own Good thing. Man. He's doing his own thing on his own. He's really nice guy. I wish you all the best. I wish you wish all the best. But I know you're going to make lots of money. And that's what I told people everywhere I go. Don't be afraid of it. You can make lots of money. I tell them I did $7 million in sales in seven months at my one store in the gay village in Toronto, Canada. And there were dozens of other stores. It wasn't like I was the only one. There were lots of others. <laughs> but they like coming to my one. We did 2,000 people every day. The average person spent 400 rand every day. And that started <laughs> and after when you're doing, once you're doing 2,000 people a day, that's $80,000. That was a Friday. That was our best wow. day. But we averaged $70,000 a day. And we gave the government scads of tax money, which I regret, but that was mm -hmm. kind of like the, the deal. Um, which they didn't honor because eventually the police come and they put me out of business. But uh, even then, they let me sell seven million dollars worth of weed in a main street in a main neighborhood in a very busy location, and uh, and everybody loved it. Nobody ever complained. So and another you, question that's coming up a lot, yeah, is what are your thoughts on so? And I, this is this is guys. This is a loaded question. This is like when you bring your freshborn baby to show someone, and everyone in the room can see it's a fucking mongoloid. But, but you know, it's your baby and you're so proud. So they're not going to tell you that to your face. But Mark, maybe, maybe you can drop the gloves, yeah? The guys want to know, SA weed and dabs versus the rest of the world. Yeah, what do you think about that? Should we be, be proud? Can I bring my baby to you and you will genuinely be, that's a pretty baby. Or are we like, uh? Video is frozen. Um, carry on. But what's the question? <laughs> Do you think our, our, our dabs compete to, say, the best in the world, Canada? Because we look at Canada as being, the or Canada and the States being the best producers of this kind of stuff. Because you Well, your dab, the, the actual extraction is great, real high quality, good smooth. In fact, overall, I would say I've liked the extraction quality better. Now, the original material is, as a rule, much stronger in Canada. Mm. Um, we're still going to 
The black market, the free market growers and extractors, of which there are many in Canada, are still amongst the world's best and have the world's best material to work with and consistently can work yeah. with it. And they also have had at least 10 years' experience with, you know, BHO, 20 years' experience with bubble bags. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's, it's mostly because they're indoor pot stronger. But you know what? British Columbia pot, to me, still isn't as good as the pot I smoked in Amsterdam when I was there in August. Sure. I thought, and, and when I asked them, I said, so are you guys getting it from Spain? Because I don't really like the pot in Spain. Because everybody there is, is, is mixing it with tobacco. And when you mix it with tobacco, tobacco burns the same way. So it doesn't have to be flushed well to burn. But if you're going to smoke pure, then the cannabis has to be flushed because you don't have anything assisting it in the burning, right? And so in Spain, a lot of people mix hash, uh, with, or sort of mix it with tobacco or make hash out of it. So they don't care about flushing. But in Amsterdam, they're growing it there now. It's very expensive, 15 euros I paid for family first Skittles. But the Skittles <laughs> is amazing. It's a great mm. strain. So I was at I was near family first, so I decided to buy their top four items, two grams of each. And I'm telling you, that weed lasted me because you didn't need to smoke much. It was yeah. strong. It yeah. was and you know what? It's like sometimes I find myself saying, I want to smoke somebody's weed that's gonna do something. Yeah. yeah. I'm not wanna ride the wave. I wanna feel you cut through everything I've been smoking till now. Say and hello. Send me somewhere new or give me something new. Right? Well they that it did that when I was in Amsterdam. Yeah, the nice. strains there they were noticeably stronger, cleaner, you know, they're worth the money. So I would say, you know, there is a hierarchy of, of, of great places in the world to get great weed, and British Columbia is one of them. South Africa is great. I still I smoked about 37 varieties, and about five of them were, were brilliant, like okay. really outstanding. Cool. You know, and then That's 20 awesome. were in the middle ground, and then 15 were just the kind of mild stuff. I couldn't tell you if I was getting high, but here's the other thing about that. What is getting high anyway? So for me, it was, I, I like every day. Every day is great for me. But I measure if I had a really great day, the weed was awesome. And what specific strain was awesome, it doesn't matter. It was all awesome. I mean, it's not like you can carry it with you. It's all an no. experience that happened in the past. So it doesn't matter how really strong it was. How was my experience? I had an awesome time. Then the yeah. weed was great. Yeah. Right? <laughs> and so I'll throw out South Africa I've, for two weeks now. I've been going, what an awesome day, what a great time. I didn't, you know, except for the reason I got these mosquito bites, but otherwise it's been <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, I didn't Every see any insects, everybody's been great to me. We went to some bizarre, strange places. I heard people say, yar. Never heard that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, uh, you said it like a pirate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's what it sounds to me, though. <laughs> yeah, it's, a, it's, it's a J and an A, and we just say the J as a Y. Yeah. yeah. So okay. uh, oh, there's an R there, though. No, it's not cool to me. Are they more asked questions yet, there? So Jacques saying, Mark, what do you think is they can still learn from other countries? I think regarding cannabis. Mm. Well, the great thing is you can learn everything, um, because you should look at. First of all. South Africa is on the cusp of a great period of entrepreneurship in the cannabis culture. For the next two years, we're going to see a lot of people get very ambitious with shops, extractions, exporting, uh, cannabis cups, events, expos. There's still room for expos throughout South Africa, and there's going to be more so, but it's going to have to be tailored to the consumer, yes. right? A little bit more, what do the people want to see? What are they willing to pay for? What is it they're looking for? What do they want to know, right? And everybody's got their own vision, but we're going to need to start studying about what people will buy, where the, where it can be grown economically, and just a whole bunch of things, where we can have clubs. How many yeah. restaurants can we get to let people smoke cannabis in the patios? What is a club? All these things. Yeah. And holding special events like Trenchtown does every Sunday. It's a big 420. All day long Sunday, people are smoking pot, selling pot, selling edibles. They don't have any permit for that, but it's going on, and it's going to happen all it's over, done, yeah. right? So these things are happening, and people are making money, and at the same time, we're adding to the wealth of our community, too. Yes. We're creating things. We're going to be growing a lot more pot. Like, year after year after year for the next five years, the amount of cannabis grown in South Africa is going to go significantly higher. Oh, yes. Uh, so, well, that can only mean different. good things, because it's money, and the money is not going to go down particularly much. South African prices are about in some international sense, about as low as they reasonably would go on an international market. Because Canada charges way more than South Africa can, can produce weed for. It can be produced really cheaply here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. That, is that, well, that's yeah. probably why the Canadians are here. Well, that's yeah. well no, they, and they're going to yeah. be nervous about that because they didn't raise millions and millions of dollars, basically, so foreign countries could undercut them overwhelmingly <laughs> yeah, on, on producer price. 
So you believe me, there'll be Canadian companies saying, why don't we just delay that import stuff for 10 years or something so we can get established and all that. But what that really means is so they can continue to charge $50 Canadian for a gram of oil that should be available and That's probably can produce here for... Mm, that's Maybe 500 rand retail. Very inexpensively in South Africa by comparison. Certainly, yeah. Yeah. Certainly. And like I just paid, helped pay for someone's cancer treatment. It was $3,000 for 60 grams of pure Rick Simpson oil. I'm led to understand Rick Simpson himself made it. So that's kind of cool. Okay. Um, and it's for my friend uh, Mickey who has breast cancer. Um, and she's happy she's doing it. The great thing is when you actually take uh, the initiative to give yourself cannabis medicine, that person feels better, like they're mm. doing something. Yes. I'm going. They're not waiting for the disease to get them, which is kind of like what you're doing. If all else, you know. Mm. Um, but when you're taking cannabinoids, you feel like you're taking something positive, destructive. Gives you a good mental attitude, and a lot of recovery is a good mental attitude. So, um, and that's something that's just barely beginning to exploit it. Is the whole idea of cannabis medicine requiring 60 grams of pure oil? Mm. Every single person who has cannabis should be doing that. Probably they should be permanently. Taking yeah. not just for 72 days, which is the cancer cure length of time to take the cigarette, but just indefinitely. Just, just keep as a just supplement. Just supplement. Just supplement. Well, here's the thing. It's not going to do you any harm. Totally. The it's price is such that you could take it for the rest of your life and, and not bankrupt yourself, especially if you produce it or we get the marketplace delivering this as, as it should. Mm -hmm. um, and I, unfortunately, I think, you know, um, millions and millions and millions millions, maybe tens of people get cancer every year throughout the world. Yeah. And and cigarette smoking has increased in a lot of countries like India and what have you. So it's not just in where we live. This is going to be something that people are going to want. Well, in and Asia and China, they, the cancer rate is going up significantly because of all the smog that they live in. Yes, yeah, so that's going to be the hugest. hugest Here's a good question for you, Mark. Is there anything that we should be wary of at this time in South Africa as it all goes towards... Oh. Or definitely be wary of foreign corporations with a lot of money coming and talking, <laughs> talking to your ministers and starting to suggest protocols by which these foreign countries or foreign companies can produce cannabis here, essentially in a plantation, colonial sense, uh, hiring people at low wages. Sure, they'll hire people. It's, I'm not saying they won't. But what happens is they give these companies some kind of exclusive license or privilege that the rest of the ordinary citizens of South Africa won't have and will still be criminalized or hounded down or badgered or refuse access to the market. See, that's the thing. Right now, it is exporting is illegal. We haven't got protocols for that. But ideally, what we would like is any kind of rule for export to be as least onerous as possible. Yes. The product should be ascertained. Like, the quality of any oil should be ascertainable. Right. There should be somebody checking that, labs, whatever. And also, if people want to keep doing business, they would do it anyway. I'm sure they would. But I don't see any reason to involve the government. So please, you just tell them to stop arresting people. Don't ask them to legalize cannabis. Don't ask them to come up with rules. Don't ask. And actually, I would reject anybody doing that. The great thing about cannabis is it's for everybody. Yeah, I think also it's something we do identify with as an organization, Fields of Green. We also see it as we can't add barriers to entry, especially in a, a, a country such as ours, where a thousand rand is an unobtainable number for the majority of the population, yeah. let alone you're going to say, okay, you want to grow some weed, it's actually half a million. Or like Lesotho now, five million. Yeah, that's great. So it's it's something we are, I think, all deeply concerned about because the moment you take this market away, it becomes an issue. But you say in Canada, though, the black market thrives and survives. And it's against the law. Uh, there, You can still be raided, and people are being raided. There are now unauthorized shops, I guess they would be called. I had one up until recently and, and other, many other people have my friend Dane Larson still has one okay. in Vancouver he's still running a shop he refuses to close because the government has licensed very too few legal shops they're not very good the legal weed is not good it's too expensive it's heavily taxed and uh, it's produced in these big factory farm circumstances that people don't find they want to smoke and buy and uh, what's we got here that's yes that's Dana's one isn't it yeah it's Dana's yeah good old Dana Dana Larson his family's from South Africa um, Are we talking the UFC guy? No, 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 no,
and he's one of the few that are because Jody, um, she had some shops selling cannabis, but she just didn't want to go to jail again, and they got very threatening. And for a woman, it's a bit different. Yeah, you can't really scare me by telling me you're going to put me in jail again. But for a woman, she doesn't want to go to jail <laughs> again. Yes, and so she's paid off pretty well all her fun. We got enormous fines, each of us, for running our weed stores. But I wish I could do it again. I will do it again. I wouldn't mind doing it here in South Africa. I think there's going to be hundreds of shops opening. I've already promised people in Port Elizabeth, <laughs> Cape Town, and another place that I would come and work there for free for a few days <laughs> and help develop their, you know, help them out. You know what you should do, Mark? You I'm should buy in Canapex. I'm sorry. Oh, oh, no. No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm talking shit. Now. But it would make more sense for me to move here and just have cannabis <coughs> culture. Yeah. One. Yeah. Because I could actually teach them how to run a, exactly. do a whole shop, and I would be in the country. Because South, South Africa, to me, reminds me a lot of Canada when my parents emigrated to Canada, right? My parents were from England, Birmingham, England. And as we go from these towns along the coast, and I see when things were built and how things are laid out and structured, I can I almost feel like everything everywhere I go, the British were here. And occasionally the Dutch were here as well, but the British were really here along this coast. Because it looks, it feels English to me. Like, I've gone to England a lot. I've lived with my parents, and I lived in Canada, and, and I'm thinking, this feels very comfortable to me, very, like, familiar, South Africa. The yeah. undulating hills, Canada's a huge country, too. Right? <coughs> and, and this is a, to me, South Africa feels like a big country. When you travel it, you look at huge valleys all the time. There's never anything, I never felt claustrophobic for one second in my life in, in South Africa. I always had massive vistas of 10, 15 kilometers of valleys, of mountains, along the ocean. So you get the sense it's a big country. And that's a nice feeling, right? As opposed to feeling a little dense all the time, like the, being in a big city or something like that. No mosquitoes yeah. in Canada, though. <laughs> well, no, we, ha we actually have lots of mosquitoes, but mosquitoes generally aren't in the cities because you need clean water for mosquitoes, fresh, clean water lying around. In a drought, you don't have a lot of fresh, clean water lying around, so there weren't any mosquitoes anywhere I was until here, which tells me they've had water here, especially in this place somehow, because you need stagnant ponds of fresh water. That's in our bomb water. And in cities, cities, pollution prevents mosquitoes from breeding. And it's really easy to stop mosquitoes from breeding in a city because you just throw soap flakes in the water and it'll kill every egg in along the entire coastline eventually. I so think we should just throw soap. Soap is a surfactant right that makes all the mosquito eggs drop down and drown. But yes. in a, out, out here, there's no one to do that. No one is going to do that. So clean, stagnant water from the rain will sit around, and that's the perfect breeding ground. And you know, I, I'm a new human here, so it's like, wow, the menu, <laughs> the menu is improved, right? <laughs> <laughs> they, they genuinely like this poutine. Eh? <laughs> so let's move on to Let's Grow. So last week, we sealed the jar on the auto. So for those whose first time it is, for the last couple of months, we've been growing an auto flower. It's a Dutch Passion Auto Ultimate, courtesy of Trophy Seeds. And we grew these things out. We dried it for a week. We jarred it last week. And in theory, we should be able to not only smoke it this week, but we've got a toy to do a THC test on it as well. Mm. Oh, nice. But this okay. thing contentious it's already yes. the toy. So let's get the weed out first. Let's get some of this auto. Who's going to crack the crack the seal, Dan? You're well, the then? Just to keep you up time. with the program, Mark, we grew these from scratch on the show, and every week we we put these autos out, and Dan has shown yeah. everybody how to grow it, how to trim it, how to split it in half, and how to tend it and feed it and water it and now we're going to show them how to smoke it, but most of the people on the live stream probably know all about smoking it. Let's probably stick with that. That's got some real good nose on it. You reckon it's ready, though? Yeah. Can we smoke well, that? Well, it smells. Shit? It smells really good. Ma uh, Juanita. Oh, of course. Smoke a bong, Mark. It's smoke a bong, yeah. Mark. Yeah, okay. Juanita. So I've yeah, got in my hand here a we'll thing called... That's definitely ready to smell. Yeah. I've got a thing here called oh, high grade. Oh, yeah, that is perfect. Wow. That's high grade. Really high good. grade. It's called a high grade from... My Crops Technologies, I'd imagine they're American. And this is for potency testing, to know the quality of your flower, the harvest timing to get better yields and get a higher and better yield. So it also tells you whether you're picking your weed too early. It tells you the balance of the nutrients and the amount of watering you did. And it looks at the health of the plant and it t detects and fights pests and diseases. Wow. It's like the computer on the Enterprise. Dun, and Kirk goes, computer, and yeah. it knows everything. Yes. Yeah. Like this thing, this little tiny thing knows it everything. Knows THC everything. at 30%. Get yeah. Hang yeah. <laughs> <laughs> on. So it looks like 
one of those snap-on lenses that you put on an iPhone to go telephoto. And we looked at it earlier and we set up some software that's got a QR code on it that you scan and Dan has downloaded the app. Yeah, we got it ready. And this can fit onto Dan's thing here and it all lights up and within it of course, there's some Dan's sort of like a million cracks, so it'll look aw <laughs> yeah, awful. It's green crack. <laughs> just tell, it's just green crack. Yeah. Green crack. It's green crack. <laughs> <laughs> so this thing's going to tell us the THC in the bud. Apparently so. So that, got, that clips over any lens of any phone. And then um, you put the bud underneath it. Yeah, we is, install is, there it any, is there any way we can get a yeah. desk cam going? Yeah, yeah. come. you got to look at what I'm doing here. So yes. Yeah. Do you want to, I'm um, starting it now. One, that three, is cool. Two. Do you want to grab that, yeah. Buzz? That's kind of neat. There you go, That's you're right. your live, Buzz. There you go, Buzz. So yeah. what you've got to do is you've got to focus on that, on the bud, and take three photos. And you see at the bottom here, I'm on THC. So apparently it can tell you your THC percentage. Whoa. Whoa. At the bottom <laughs> there. THC, there, THC. Yeah. Or you can go grade on that side. So if we go THC, we take a photo. You just smush it against the lens, dude. Well, it's on this lens thing that's over there. So the image, okay, the, one of three. Oh, uh, so you... So then you got to turn it around. You turn it around. And get another picture. Same. Focus it. Take a photo. You don't move, you don't move. So the question is, okay. do we trust the results that come magically from photographing three photographs? I don't know. About three I, I don't know. Minutes. But I mean, it makes it look really pretty. It mm. takes look it on three that. sides, so it gets a spread of maybe one portion okay, so was facing the sun and one was in the shade. And now it's analyzing, and what it's going to do. This is pretty. That's what a hell of a phone you got there, dude. <laughs> right, is this. We need to start, give Dan a go. So now new this is. I've got a new phone in my bag. Is just a, this, is, this is outdoor that was grown in Hillcrest in Durban. No. And no, no, this is the this last. Is, this is the auto we grew on the show. Oh, shit. Sorry, man. All right. I'll, I'm going to have another day and just mind my own business. So it says 17%. <laughs> it says 17% with a plus minus 3% accuracy. I don't know how it gets to tell you that. I mean... Let's do an experiment. Yeah. Let's photograph something three times that has no cannabis. Okay. I brought and something for that. Zero. We'll yes. use this Lafola. This is like a herbal smoking thing. Exactly. We'll put so put something in this shit. We'll find out what's what. <laughs> in the back. <laughs> <laughs> or get some of that stuff you used to buy from High Times magazine all those years. It was like fake weed. Right? But it, it looks sort of like it. Okay. So. Um, so we're putting the fake shit in now. Yeah. yeah. <coughs> It looks like weed. It does. Oh, good. <laughs> We're going to mess with them. We're going to mess with them. Um, so you're now doing picture number two. Image number two is cool. And now, this is just herbal smoking tobacco to see if we can fool this we should way. actually go dum 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 on the res what is this actually? Oh, 13%! Oh, what? Oh, <laughs> oh, 13% well, THC! Oh, but there you go, it is, it's That's Lion's classic. Tail. <laughs> what is it, what's that? It's Lion's Tail, which no, is why actually called Wild Dacha. It's now got 13% THC. No, it's got 0% THC. Zero. Yeah. It's <laughs> That's hilarious. Okay, oh, no. so there we go. Myth busted. Myth busted. Oh, wait, wait, wait. <laughs> I thought, we trashed this product in record. <laughs> 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 so, so that's um, what it does, basically. It clips on your phone like this. I mean, it's basically a camera that I, takes a photo and. Do you have those? But what a pigeon! What a pigeon! No, because I so. thought there's no way a photograph can determine these things. You, otherwise, you know, like that guy would be heralded as a genius. <laughs> Who would need a chromo spectrometer anymore, right? It's right. right. I just need an iPhone. What about the table? <laughs> uh, uh, what's the, what about the table? <laughs> what about the other switch? When you turn it on to, what's the other thing? <laughs> what is it? Other setting? <laughs> what's it grade? <laughs> huh? It grade. says grade. Grade. So what is? Hang on, I've got. Fuck, I don't know. Is it low grade, high grade, or? 
Uh, great, no, I'm going to laugh at anything it says. <laughs> <laughs> so, so what I did is I anticipated this might not be a great thing, or it might. So I thought, let's give it a, a, a fair chance as well. Uh, I was fortunate enough to come across a section of garden somewhere this season, and I managed to get four buds at different stages. I managed to get what would be like a three-year-old little child, and then I got a slightly older one, and an older, and a harvester, dude. So we now need to see, can it actually judge if, a, if an early plant is low in THC? Or is this thing just going to spit out 13s and 16s all day? So you're going to do this. Just you just stay there, because otherwise you can't hang me. Dan. No, 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 no. You're you Dr. Octopus. <laughs> Okay, let's go. Because that should be like 6% or 5 or even lower. Same as the Jack. Same as my whole life. <laughs> okay, so... This can do. This can store then what, did, what do you do in this? Is this fresh up a bud? Yeah, this is the youngest, youngest, youngest cutting we could get. Okay. Make sure that make sure dry flower is in focus. Charles Henning. Oh, hello, Charles. Hello, my bro. Uh, the app is probably made by the same people making the map swab test they use in Canada. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, God, that's funny. So this thing just said make sure the dry bud. No, Maybe this thing doesn't working. do wet bud. Only a witch can fold a fitted sheet. <laughs> Fucking Charles Henning. Write that down, bro. Ah, oh, gosh. It's like Powerball. It just spits out number numbers. <laughs> no, no, percent. No, this thing can't be wrong. Right. <laughs> down, down. <laughs> oh, that thing, man. Okay, okay, okay. We just screw the stuff in the middle. We're gonna go straight to this one. This, this really, really. This awesome. over right, right fucking over right thing. Right one, yeah. Okay, cool. Dude. <laughs> so okay, product assassination, courtesy of the Hotbox Show. This was not my intention, guys. I thought I was doing No, they actually yeah. talked to me like they were serious. Oh, we've got this great machine. Well, no, we've got this machine that is purported to do great that things. That looks really good. Look at those trucks. That looks really well, I mean, good. I don't know if I heard does. purported, though. I thought it was, oh, I thought it was going to be awesome. I, I was see more optimistic, thing. too, more. I really was. <laughs> Look, if it does, um, at least it makes a good microscope. And if it does save the picture to a gallery, at least you've got good bud porn. That's, that's yeah. I, I'm going to try and find the silver lining here because yeah. it looks... I, it's I do remember you yeah. said that they... But people don't buy the product the, for the, the silver lining. <laughs> okay, uh, guys, let's... And dun, the verdict's in. 17%. So I've been 2% more from <laughs> that to that. I don't know. I'm sorry. <laughs> Give or take 10%, which is... Yeah. Yeah. Let's go with that trans guy. I don't want to say 17%. What's in this jar here? How did yeah. this come about? I don't even know what yeah. this jar is. Let's check this jar. We saw this... The, didn't we see this the other day? Okay. Last night. Yeah. Um, where does this jar come from? Did anybody know what this weed is? It comes from somewhere. No, we're going to test this random weed. Well, that's well, I guess that's a good, a good way. This I, give this product, I give this product. I do give this product props, like you're saying, Joe, as a as a loop to pretty much try and get into your boat as close as you can. Yeah. Because it is a kind of magnification. So as a scope, it's cool, but as a scope, it's it's okay. Well, um, but you can't do anything about on another setting. All you're doing is trying to figure out the THC. Well, have we tried grading it yet? Yeah, it doesn't really tell you much else, does it? No. Yeah, let's try grade. I'm keen to see this grade up. Yeah, yeah no, I think that's... Um, what, what is it retail for, guys? <laughs> about a grand five. Yeah. Fifteen hundred bucks for it. Grand suppose. three, a grand. So you know, what, um, it would be future. cool for dealers on the street. You know, he's doing a dodgy deal in a car park somewhere, and the oak says it's fifteen percent THC, and you go, "Yeah, bro, right." And he put that on it, and it says seventeen, because it seems to be locked. <laughs> 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 no, no, that's great. It's feature locked in the loop. Okay, so so uh, what I'll do is I'll try and make a bit more of an effort with our spin-off channel show coming soon some sort of reviews by buzz shit because i feel like some of the stuff we could go a little deeper into but i feel like this thing did not win today so Sorry. in this week's segment of is it shit or lit <laughs> jules shit or lit 
So it's one of those oh, Brexit boy. things, you know. It's, it's um, <laughs> 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 there's a lose lose situation here. No, I think it's quite shit. <laughs> yeah, no, it's a, I, I, I thought it was something that you know, Patrick Abiabiz, remember Patrick? Yeah, the Mantanushka guy, he brought one to the office and it was like twice the thickness of a cell phone. And he put his bud on it and it was USB. And um, he got a readout on his phone of um, two cannabinoids and pesticides and stuff and moisture and even. And so I thought that was that, but that was like 400 euro, six and a half. And even though we don't know if that's accurate, that could be, no, the, that could be the same soothsaying we're seeing here. That's because you know what it is. It exploits the idea that we're all too cheap to buy a real chromo spectrometer <laughs> or in practical. <laughs> so we're looking for some cheap, dodgy way to reassure ourselves that our weed isn't, doesn't suck and isn't. Uh, but the bottom line is, someone's going to have to buy the real deal and then charge people. Yeah. That's what you do, because when the labs came to me and I ran a shop, I made a deal that I would get it for a hundred, uh, what is it, uh, a thousand rand mm -hmm. a, a sample. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, it was two thousand rand a sample. But if I did twenty at a time, he would charge me. That. And here's what I learned: it was great for me. I got a great printout and uh, everything, heavy metal, you name it. But nobody cared. When they came in, I said, "Does anybody want to see? We have hundreds of test results." One person just said, well, did you read them? And I said, yes. And they said, well, that's good then. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So I knew that if we get fucked so up. If you read them available. and everything was fine, then why do I need to read them, yeah. right? I'm here to buy them. I trust you, yeah. right? Yeah. But, I, but I remember the authorities always say they should be tested, but nobody gives a shit. It, as soon as somebody, I'll tell you one thing, they'll give a shit when they read in the newspaper that somebody got poisoned with your weed. You know, <laughs> oh. if they see that, they the may not come is anymore. better than the bad publicity, though, about it. So well, we I, all I'm, smoked I'm our weed, so we were relatively confident yeah. that it was going to be good, yeah. right? And we had 28 people, you know, we had 35 different kinds, and <laughs> there was a complete changeover uh, in three days. So we, we, we would have at least in one week probably 80 to 90 strains have come through. So... Now, we do need to now test the proof in the pudding with auto flowers. Okay. Guys, we put fucking three months into growing these things. Yeah, Another couple of weeks into is. curing it. Okay. Uh, I think Dan's just rolled a clean green. I'm about to roll one up. Um, you know what it's called? Clean green? No tobacco. No. Oh, no tobacco. I like guys, that. Any take take note, European. Yeah, yeah take note, green. Europe. Green. Next week in take Spain. Take note, Spanabis. Fucking tobacco. Oh, it is. Harry Farmer. Look at those spliffs in your seat for the rest of the oh. afternoon. Oh. Harry Farmer hasn't got his morning. seeds from the hot box last week. Oh. Vulgar oh. Europeans. <laughs> Harry Farmer. Still haven't received my, se received my seeds from the hot box the other week. The other week. Dun, dun, dun. Yes, dude. Did somebody win a prize? Yeah, now we get a prize every week. Yeah. Do the fake weed test again, Russ Warren. Uh, Mark, put that on your next labia. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck's sake. Oh, my God. So, that's Harry Farmer, uh, please DM me. Ring. It's possible. I don't know if I sent you tracking deeds or not, but just hit me with a DM or a message in the week because I'm pretty fucking high right now, so I'm not going to remember. But please, <laughs> if I fucked up, I'll throw in extra seeds even. Don't you worry. Sure. Yeah. Sure. So what's next on the list? <laughs> all right, so guys, please remember to vote on whether you're Mukh of Expos. Uh, I think we all agreed that that product was shit. Unfortunately, uh, You know, for someone who, I'm not a grower, so like really irrelevant to me, but if I was a grower, just for looking <laughs> nice and close at the thing, if it's ready to harvest, like checking out the trichomes, uh, I thought it looking would be for disease, I mean, it says, yeah, I refute the potency testing, but maybe the harvest timing, yes. the yeah. plant care, and the plant health. Yes. It can be useful. It's a for. mobile microscope that's nice and easy to But, like someone just said on the chat, you can go on any of these websites and buy a 200 rand clip on loop for your phone. Yeah. yeah. Well, well, I would recommend yeah. That's that. 10 times less than this. How's this for a thread from Tavo in Soweto? <laughs> Greetings, Tavo. <laughs> uh, one of the guys that does all the flyer runs for D Day mm -hmm. in oh, Soweto. This is a, a segment that goes, Great gadget indeed. What's the price of that gadget? Nice price indeed. Buzz, I'm going to place an order soon. The elder said it's shit. So I guess I'll pass, because I was taught to listen to my elders. <laughs> 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 oh, peace, Tavo. That was, was a super woke moment. <laughs> super woke moment. And then we got Ross watching from Dublin. <coughs> Hi, Ross. We got Ross in Dublin just tuned in. Cool, man. So, guys... Um, no, I didn't win anything. It was just, we've got you there, dude. Ah. Oh. That was at 420 in Dublin. Right? Hustle. Yeah. <laughs> Is that yeah. where you spent 420? Yeah, 420 was in Dublin. And then uh, Global Marijuana March in Cardiff. 
How do we post picks for the competition? Yeah. Oh, Cardiff is a nice hotel. Uh, I love Dublin call. anyway. I so spoke at Trinity College to much to my satisfaction there. Yeah, so. I think I seem to remember that. No. Well, I've got a, a, an Irish friend that reminds me of you. I told him. I said, you know, you and Jules are like spitting everything. Spitting everything. He's the guy that drove me around Ireland to all okay. the universities. <laughs> Thank and you. he's growing, and he's got a farm, and, you know, mm. charming guy. Yeah, sounds, sounds a lot like me. No, he was. He, he's totally like you. <laughs> <laughs> so, guys, uh, <laughs> please check out trophyseats.com. <coughs> uh, they sponsored the Auto Zekri Grid. they got lank, lank, lank seats from all over. Lots of Dutch passion as well. There's also a coupon code for 20% off. I'm too stoned to remember. It's either Hot Box Show or The Hot Box Show. No, that'll get you 20% off your it's order. It's Hot Box Show. Hot, hot Box, box show. show. Yeah. Yeah. With Dutch passion, they're giving 20% off what? Off their seeds. Really? Yeah. yeah. So yeah. You just have to say hot box show. At uh, checkout, mm. and you get 20% <coughs> off. You put the code in oh, hot box okay. show, and that's, that's quite, quite cool. you know, that's significant. Yes. I handled Dutch passion seeds for 10 years, so I have a tremendous amount of experience with their stuff. Right. And Excellent. actually, their Durban poison was the best of all the ones marked Durban. Sensi mm -hmm. Seed Bank had a lot of great strains, but the Dutch passion Durban poison people always wrote me great letters about it. Said they really liked it, but you know who knows? I started selling seeds in 1994, oh, and stopped wow. in 2005. So we're talking 14 years ago. I always wondered how they maintain the integrity of the genetics, you know, generation to generation to generation, because yeah. I use in the same clone mother. It's not really likely, no, right? And not. so, uh, and over the years, I've seen some things like, for example, White Widow today does not look anything like it when I saw it in 1996. It's just, it doesn't, it, first of all, it was a very sparse yielding thing with, with a lot of resin, even pouring out of the leaves around the bud. But the buds were always small. It was a it's terrible small. yielding thing. But it looked very, very white on green. Now it's like loaded with red hairs when I see people with white. Where did all these red hairs come from? That wasn't in the original. From the movie. Irish. <laughs> well, red hairs, red, red hairs are actually the major component that shows the skunk number one. Okay. And you see red hairs anywhere in the world, it's skunk number one. We've got wow. a strain like that locally referred to as Roybart. Red beard. Red used to sell seeds from a guy that I, I gave him the name, he provides seeds, called African Seed Company, I called him. And he had 12 different strains he would send me, Malawi, um, three Rui bars, one Trans Sky, one mm. from another place, and that just meant red hairs. And the funny thing, when I sold these seeds to people, I'd get the funniest letters because people write, Mark, I'm not sure you should sell these seeds because most of these plants are very feral. Right now, when you go to the Trans Sky and see those plants, yeah, you wouldn't grow those. And uh, that would freak people out going, wow, these are tiny little nugs all stringy <laughs> everywhere. Like, why would anyone grow these? It's right? been flowering for two years. <laughs> <laughs> yes, exactly. So, yeah, but the thing is, people would say, I think I'll cross them, and a lot of people started crossing them to try and make them more dank. And of course, that's been the mission for 20, 25 yeah. years since I've been selling, is to make those land races more dank, because Gorilla Glue just doesn't work anywhere else outdoors. Like in Columbia, it always gets mold. Whenever they get the big, chunky, beautiful nuts <laughs> that they think should be awesome, man, you just need three or four cloudy, cool, rainy days in Colombia, and you're going to have mold and all Instant those things. Because like the like land race uh, ones are all thin and wispy, and the wind blows yeah, through and dries them off all the time, and they're bug-resistant already and drought-resistant and every other UV-resistant, so the, everybody says the same thing. They're just, you know, people want stronger stuff, but these are good to grow. So that, and that's the universal problem everywhere. The land races survive under very harsh conditions, and all these pampered yes. indoor but massive yielding strains. Right. But I will not tell you, in the, last two, in the last two days around here, I've seen some very massive outdoor buds. So some people are conquering that problem. Massive outdoor buds that didn't have any trace of mold and probably won't get any. Right, it's just not moist enough mm. around here. You know, it's a great and climate out here. Guys have been mentioning in the chat, you know, SA is one of the best climates. Well, this wine is nice as wine goes. Mm. Yeah, well, remember, this wine has got two grams per bottle. Of what? Though? Well, well, that's right. Because if, it's, like if it's two grams of this BHO, we're in deep shit. Right. Mm -hmm. But if it's just two grams of bud. If it was two grams of bud, that's wouldn't be worth doing then. Well, it's it's maybe it's like a sort of tincture thing, but she spoke to me. Why don't we get the person on the phone right now? Uh, she's on my uh, she's on my WhatsApp. Yeah, let's get to call she's this person. And, uh, <laughs> we gonna, he just said WhatsApp, yeah, but already he wants to talk about the What I believe it is, is like, this she, she's telling me that it's she's found a way of making THC water soluble. 
The lady Ooh. contacted me while I was away with Mark, and I'm doing all of this on the fly. The thing's coming up on the dashboard. Have you got the wine yet? No, I haven't got the wine yet, but I'm not home to check and like, the wine, the wine, the wine, and now the wine's here, and I see on the label, it's just like anything else you put in your body that you don't smoke. All them edibles, they don't have a label properly. Two grams of 81% BHO, or is it two grams of 2% hemp that we've had infused in the yeah. brain and swilled it around a bit and dumped it out later? Well, the label on the back is almost disturbing, though, because it's kind of like... Read it, it's beautiful. The future I feared, because Mary Jane infused wine is a full-bodied, wistful, black, fruity wine imbued with herbalicious marijuana leaf and ground... Well, there is the leaf, then, two grams of leaf. Two marijuana leaf and grounded in a classic cedar complexity. It's already starting to sound like those wine descriptions. A refreshingly enticing wine that is well-structured and abundant in firm tannins, making it the most delightful and relaxing choice. A gentle and unique flavor of the plant strains are preserved in this beautifully accessible barrel-aged and hand-bottled wine with love and a puff of indica. And then it <laughs> says, the strains included contain Northern Lights Big Bud, Northern Lights Critical, Cheese Astro Queen, those three. Hmm. And then it says two grams for 750 milliliters. And then reminds us, alcohol is dangerous for your health. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Well, I'm about to uh, say 1995 <laughs> at your local tops. No, not this yet. is um, no. I think this is like a private bin thingy. That's um, but the front label is. But you know what though? It's beautifully done. It's okay, beautifully but something done. bothers me. Everything is beautifully done, but it's 99% wine and it's 1% cannabis. If that, because it tells us it's from these things, but it says leaves, right? Well. I'd like to know a little bit more. If I'm going to buy it, like, yeah. what do you mean leaves? Yeah, like, sugar leaves, well, like, sh- fan leaves. Where, what exactly? Yeah. And in fact, if you're going to bother even saying it contains cannabis, why don't you show a photograph of some of that process? Because we're curious. We've all seen how wine's made. We know how wine's made. Yeah. And they spent 99% of their text on saying how great the wine was. With a, right. with a, with but we're tr- not buying it for wine because no. if I was going to buy a red wine, I know a hundred different kinds you know. I already buy. Yeah. Yes, that I already like. But yeah. so why would I buy your one? So what is it about your cannabis that is exceptional enough to make me want to buy your wine instead of a regular one? Mm-hmm. Because there's certain un- uncertainty, but at the same time, I don't want to just support a brand. Who, and and so often you're they're using cannabis like in beers where they're only using the hemp seeds for lipids. Right, and, and it doesn't really have that much to do with it. So, you know, they're kind of exploiting it because there's, there's the uh, THC molecules on the front of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's all. T- and by the way, it's beautifully done. It's and it, it is well, beautifully mean, done. It, that, I commend them for that. I would just say, let's um, hear a little bit more about the cannabis because that's the people you're trying to appeal to. And the, and the other thing about this particular glass of wine I'm finding in the last five minutes is, it hasn't fucked up the flavor of it by putting weed in it. No, no, most, no, most beers. Very good. No, no, this, 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 this is, is really good. Really this is classic. It still tastes like wine. Now, classic. listen, but if we all of a sudden end up in a stupor, we're going to have to report next week. Oh, no, but that'll be sclerosis of the liver and all the wine's fault. It'll be great toxic. Follow us great on toxic. You know, this <laughs> wine, oh, no, he died a great this wine. This wine is a very, very, very nice wine. It's excellent. It's a really classic. Cabernet Sauvignon. Yeah, it's a classic South African blend. I believe they're, I didn't read properly, I think they're in Stellenbosch area. I think they're in the yeah, Cape. Yeah, they're in the On the wine route. They're very excited about it. I'm in the well, same camp. Well, good for them, man. I'm they just need a bit little improvement, but you know what? Beautiful label, yeah. lovely presentation. But I'm in right the same right. camp as you. I don't trust the two... Yeah, I don't, yeah, I don't yeah. trust the fusion. It's going to end badly for weed somehow. I know what happens if I share ha- a bottle of wine with someone, but I don't know what would happen with this. But let's face it, if it's, if it's what, two grams of just leaf? Then there's That's nothing. nothing. Yeah, it's nothing. It's a worm in the bottle. Yeah, we won't it's a worm. <laughs> yeah. It is. Yeah. But also, you know, you were saying it, you don't taste the dab. I find this a lot with people when they sell cannabis-infused things. People want it to taste like weed. Because it doesn't sit right in their mind if they can't taste the weed. What, well, like have like a brownie or something? Taste yeah. yeah, that's too bad about that. I, I like it. If it can be concealed, I'm yeah. happy with that. And that's that. why you put dab into, into any edible you sort it. Cool. Rather than, than putting the actual green plant into it. Yeah, I know. But talking about this wine and stuff, yeah. This wine and stuff, market it as well, yeah. Um, so hemp beer, there's this beer that's been doing the rounds lately for about the last year, uh, Durban Poison. Mm. So yeah. it's riding that brand thing of Durban Poison really hard. But it turns out, that this week, it was this weekend, this week. it was pretty yeah, late. Yeah. Eh? Yeah. Uh, this was all over, but I'm going to quote from IOL now. Cops instructed liquor outlets to remove cannabis-infused beer. 
Had them on this. It's not cannabis infused. They're confused about this. That's mm-hmm. if we're gonna get to. Oh, okay. I n- saw this all the way along the coast. <laughs> they don't even know what they're dealing with. Police officers have allegedly instructed liquor stores to remove a cannabis infused beer product from their shelves, despite it containing no illegal substances. Yeah. Uh, two liquor stores in Hermanus, Western Cape, have allegedly been told by the SAPS to stop selling Durban Poison cannabis lager, pending an investigation. The Durban Poison owner, Graham Bird, said he has tried explaining to police that the product is entirely legal, but the stores have not been given the go-ahead to resume sales. We've tried to explain the legality and that we are stocked already all over the country. The Durban Poison Brew uses hemp seeds to add its unique flavor. Hemp and cannabis are the two main species within the cannabis family, but hemp is not highly psychoactive and is legal for commercial use, blah, blah, blah. blah so these, nice. these oaks, these oaks, I'm just going to get this out of my system and you can go on because I'm going to smoke this fucking yeah. job. So these oaks, these oaks have been riding the Durban Poison thing hard. They've been like, they've been a real cock tease with people about it. This is what pisses me off about these fucking brands that are riding this thing. <laughs> call, it, out. call it hemp poison. Yeah. Call it Durban hemp. <laughs> you keep calling it cannabis, and then when the cops come to your front door, you go, Mommy, Mommy, tell them it's hemp. It's not cannabis. <laughs> Fuck it. Get with it now, man. You call it fucking Durban poison. <laughs> you, you, you said, written the name. You said, Schwang, so many lighties. So many lighties, they save up their 15 rand. They borrow uh, their big brother's ID. They go buy the same <coughs> beer. They think, yeah, it's my Tani's birthday. I'm going to get so smashed on this weed beer. And it's go slow. It's <laughs> fuck <laughs> it. Guys, you've made it. Now own it. Because also I check at the expo. Now there's a Malau, a, a Swazi gold beer and all that. Yeah. Swazi gold beer. Yeah. <coughs> Come on, Oaks. Oh if you're going to commit, just put the fucking weed in there and we'll buy it. <laughs> Done it. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> fuck the bottle store. I'll come to your door. <laughs> it, uh, it, uh, two things with Mark in Durban last, two days ago in the dispensary. There's a standalone thing with the cannabis uh, energy drink thing, the green one oh, we've seen. No. With the wrap that says 100% legal. And it's purely because there isn't anything in it. Not a single thing. There's not a single thing. So they're falling into the same trap. If they want to play with the big boys and put weed leaves on everything, not even the weed yes. people put weed leaves on it yet. Yeah, we know what we do. Just keep it cool with the weed leaf. But everyone <laughs> wants to have a weed leaf on. Yeah. I had this out. I actually met the guy the, when we all went down to Sinsa. Yes. And we had the after party for the AGM uh, in one of the big halls there in Sinsa. And he had a 3x3 three three gazebo, Durban Poison. But he didn't have this hemp beer with him at the, on the at the day on the day and i come from the same camp as mark on putting these two things together we will become the blame for someone fucking out yeah. on six bottles of this oh, wine yeah. so um i don't know it's a really tasty wine and it was it's durban poison isn't a bad beer he's got three of them i think he's got a blonde <coughs> and red and a and a lager i think oh. something like that and um they're not unpleasant and uh, i've never tried durban poison but i'm piss, as pissed off as buzzes that people melt men, even Connie, you know, we love Connie to bits, but he's put some essence of hemp oil in his mm. monk's gin. There's no weed in it. Yeah. yeah. You know, it's like, like it's it's false so advertising. It's a yeah. Well, no, if that. you call it hemp beer, I, we have these in Canada, lots of them. And every micro brew and local has got a hemp beer. That's good. That shows us a wide u- variety of uses for cannabis, but he calls it cannabis beer. And that's different. You can't call something cannabis beer and not expect to be regarded in some way as psychotropic, yeah. right? Because that's what is going on, whereas hemp is understood to be the industrial use. It's, mm-hmm. So it's being used, and it's used for the lipids, actually, in the hemp seeds for hemp beer. Mm. And it produces good beer. And, uh, but, yeah, he wanted to get it. He wanted young people to recognize this beer as hip and trendy and cool. And now he's getting pushback from the authorities that he's exploiting, in a sense. So right. yeah. I don't feel quite so bad for this guy. He's going to end up convincing people it's legal and they'll be fine. But, yeah, um, you're right. He's The future yeah. is here. They're not going away. The wine's not going to go away. And if there's the essence of half a dozen leaves in it and two grams of sh- shade leaf in it, one day there'll be two grams of sugar leaf, and next there'll be two grams hey, of listen, bud, and this then this it'll be a concentrated <laughs> super <laughs> whack of fucking Merlot sabbing. Oh, I need thousand milligram bottle of wine. And it's just the beginning Pussy because clap. you're going to see a lot of mushroom rights being, and people using mushrooms over the same privacy law, that they feel they have the right to sell mushrooms at these electronic yeah. dance places. And I, I wouldn't do mushrooms in electronic dance. I like quiet and long yeah. contemplative, pl- a nice place to be, because I don't usually move that much after taking four to six grams of mushrooms. 
But uh, <laughs> but that's going to be the next thing about privacy is taking all of these psychedelics and hallucinogens and the same rule, you know, yeah. able to have trances yeah. where you've got all these. Or for that matter, um, I had an entheogenesis convention. The authorities never came. We advertised it. But we had all these famous people who wrote books on psychedelics come for a weekend and give a lecture. And then at night we had every kind of psychedelic, 2CB, MDMA, you know, everything, LSD, you name it, whatever you wanted, we would have ready for you. And then you'd trip for two nights at the weekend. Can I deflip set to go? We would advertise that, and we never got authorities. So, And that wasn't legal then, by any means, to distribute them, but it could be seen as legal here in South Africa now. Um, do you remember at Crithy's at the dispensary in Durban the other day, there was the big chocolate yeah. cake laid out there? Did you have a piece of that chocolate cake? I don't remember any no, chocolate No, I don't remember cake. having any chocolate cake. I Maybe that's a new kind of chocolate when cake. The, when you're the chauffeur for the principal, don't do edibles. It's just don't, not worth no. it. I just follow the blue line on the dashboard. I always think so, of Hunter S. Thompson's fear in Logan <laughs> in Las Vegas when I think of a road trip gone wrong. Best country. Right? <laughs> right? 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 No, I don't think we, we might have gone past a turn off once or twice. No, no. We no, found no nothing like that. But that's what, like, that would be, like, the, if the worst happened. We're, we're the same age, and we kind of grew up with the same music. We know the same lyrics to the yeah, same songs. Fun. So now what I can tell you, after being in the, the, the Ponderland now, there's signal everywhere. You've got to go way, way out to get no signal. Mm. But yeah. on, on most dirt roads, and certainly every single tar road, there was signal, and there's Spotify. So we were coming up with, fuck, I haven't heard that phrase. Do you remember that? Yeah, we, could, we were in ridiculous we songs. Ex- yeah, no, we, not Bob Marley on repeat. No, <laughs> no, no, not Bob Marley, but we did some Bob Dylan. Okay. Yeah. Oh, I, oh, yes. I can't believe I said that. So, yes. <laughs> you were speaking a little earlier about um, traveling with weed and how easy it is once you're within Europe. But something that came up, Dan brought this to my attention, on a Facebook page called Dags and Dabs, it's a local page, that you... Our post about traveling with cannabis on South African flights was taken down by Zuck. Uh, please share, blah, blah, blah. Uh, one of our team members, Hilton, entered the OR Tambo police station and brought five grams of flour, uh, one and a half grams of indoor hash, and a seven centimeter clone in a pot directly to the colonel to confirm if we are protected by this new section of the constitutional verdict. Uh, and it is confirmed we are protected. Uh, fly SA Fair does not have limitations on plant carry-on, and they cannot use the defense of illegal substances. So what these That's oats basically what did about. is they flew with da- with hash, uh, weed, and a clone on a local flight. Yeah, yeah. And I, I was made to feel like that was okay. And yeah, I, 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 well, I fuck, I've been doing it ever since it was illegal. Yeah, what the the well, in fairness, well, the only good thing that happened <laughs> in Canada, too. You're allowed to take weed on a plane with you across Canada. You don't have to declare <coughs> it's cool. Is it? And you can smoke at the airport now. I can't believe there's, a, there's a smoking yes. symbol and a cannabis leaf yes. symbol side by side. Woo-hoo. And you can smoke either one in this room. Nice. But you can't take them on international flights, even if the destination is legal. But everybody's doing it anyway, because they realize that the They've taken the dogs out of the airport for cannabis. There, are no, there is no detection, really. They're relying on you to tell them. When you go to Canada, every single person, it says, are you bringing cannabis into the country? It's the only question they ask you of yeah. that name. Firearms. Yeah, yeah. Nothing, no, you're not supposed to bring those anyway, but are you bringing <coughs> cannabis? And they say at least 150 people a month say yes. And then they give it to them, and they don't charge them, but they... I'm fine. Why did you tell them that? <laughs> I wonder if people still smuggle here? weed in their battles. I do wonder. No, I don't have to do Depends that how much it is. That's a prison thing. Jody, that one of the things, many things that traumatized her uh, when she was arrested for selling cannabis, uh, being the queen pin, as it were, um, was she was handcuffed to a person who was withdrawing from heroin, and then the person beside them in the next part of the paddy wagon said they had something, a surprise, and they pulled something out of their butt. And it was plastic bag with everything you need to roll a joint. So there was weed, a rolling paper, a filter. Oh, and I know, I know yeah, I'm telling you. So, and they end up rolling. While this is all, they never stop. The thing is driving. And they get, they get the joint rolled. And there's a way they light it. I don't know where that lighter was, too. But they light it up, and it's going. And then they get to where they're going. And Jody says they literally fall out of the door. And the cops go, Oh, really, right? Because a big pile of smoke comes bursting out. And they almost, like, blame Jody, right? She has nothing to do with it. She has no idea what's going on. She has no idea about putting things in her bum and what's the first time she's ever been arrested. And she comes out, and it's just a big cloud of weed when they get to the jail. 
Right, and they're looking at her like right on cue. Yeah. yeah, I know. And she's going, "What?" And it's like a magical mystery tour to her. This whole getting arrested thing. Right? I'm just wondering if this is a an OCB or a raw product. <laughs> this 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 prison banky that you use. Ooh. I would be more amazed though if it came out a perfectly formed, dry, king size thing in a straight line. I then I would have been blown away. I would have smoked it. Stash I code. promise. Uh, stash code. Eh? <laughs> a doo <dude> tube. <laughs> <laughs> well, so it is interesting times though because also at the expo there was a guy selling clothes yes there yeah. was there was an entire plant at the store right next to us I did not ask him I come know. on man um, no we were, oh, Ma Mark and I spent a night at a place called Mpandi which is probably 60 k's from uh, uh, Port St. John's and it's half of that is on dirt and it's, it's slippery and it's in an estuary and we got to a, a, a backpackers on the end of the cliff with not a sheet on the bed, not a towel in the thing, not a soap in it <laughs> anywhere, yeah. no food, no nothing. And we'd been promised like it was crayfish time. Oh, yeah, oh, crayfish time opened. They said, no, come and stay with us. We'll get you light crayfish. And we said, whoa, bring lemons, they said. Yeah, we brought the lemons. We stopped in Amtata for lemons in this freaking So you know what to do in like you have, you have tequila. Yeah, get crayfish. <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> so we get to Mpandi, and it's really apparent really quickly that crayfish is like, it's in its infancy. But if they're going to go and get them, they better start now, you know. But it turns out the guy who was going for the crayfish got drunk with the money because there was a big funeral on. So we didn't get any crayfish, so now we, got, we haven't got anything. We got the end of some biltong, we got like a couple of bits of fruit and stuff, and so now we get somebody to cook for us at 8 o'clock at night. But it was chicken and pup. Oh, it was good. Yes. It was great, but it was well, a quarter past 11 at night. Oh, shame, man. You wouldn't believe, all the way around there, when you look off the cliff, you can see all the lights of the grows. They're oh, tapping into the electric yeah, to put light on the plants to stop them from vegging, mm -hmm. because the reason I'm telling you all of this is, one guy sold 50 clones while we were there at 200 bucks a piece. 10 grand. Nice. No, sorry, 100 bucks a piece. Sorry, you got 5 grand out of it. Sorry. You got 5 grand out of the yes, deal. Yes, they were 100 bucks each. They were 100 bucks each, and he'd gone off to do all of that in the night and, and get it all sorted. So the, it's all clone now. People are cloning the shit out of it. They don't want any flowers, so it's weird. There's no night, hardly any night sky. Because it's just clumps of just household globes on strings going that's across people's clothes. I thought you were doing Colombia for Yeah, I've seen, yeah, yeah. In Mexico. I've I thought I was going to see the stars like we did in one spot. Yeah, yeah. Bathurst. My Chris most, most beautiful night sky I've ever yeah, seen. Yeah, no, Bathurst. Chris Jays was a super oh, cool place to boy, stay. Oh, that was gorgeous. Really lucky. He's got great animals around him and stuff. Yeah, no, we've had an adventure, my friend. So and I've been really good being in the car for you for so long. You know, you, you're in close fine confines, and I really genuinely enjoyed your company. Yeah, that was good. It was. Yeah, it was cool. We never had a single disagreement or argument. No, not really. No. No. That always helps a road trip. Yeah. Uh, hey, he's not family, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so, off road SA has been asking Lang questions there, so yeah. I'm going to give him one yeah, because I, I don't know what the fuck were you this. I guess. Yeah. What's Mark's take on Jason Wilcox? Who's Jason Wilcox? Jason's great. Jason. Who's Jason? Well, I feel bad for the people that won in court in Canada. Every time we went to the Supreme Court, we won, whether it was medical in the first place or uh, edibles. What's that, late 90s, yeah? Yeah, well, late 90s, right yeah. to the present day. Now, Jason Wilcox l led a group called Cannabis in Canada, and they went to the Supreme Court to say that edibles and all byproducts we had a right to, and that the government couldn't outlaw them or persecute them. So they win this great case that allows people to access edibles, and then the legalization, the Cannabis Act, essentially wrote, washed that all away. As though all our court battles that we won before had no meaning now and no application. Because you still, you definitely can't get edibles in Canada right now. They say you will be too, able to at the end of the year. But the government's legalization has been all disastrous. So there's no edibles across Canada. There's very few oils being sold. There's almost no free market stores around. Um, there are pens available. Um, there's so much that's, that I was selling that's still not <coughs> legal and not available. And the government <coughs> provided even more money for the police to go after all the free market entities that were being ignored for years up until recently. So legalization has made access much worse, prices much higher, and has expanded the bureaucracy. There's 45 police, politicians, narcs, 
and uh, on the boards of directors of all these licensed companies too. And so the, the every man, the ordinary Canadian, has been given worse access, no opportunity to sell cannabis, um, can only grow four plants, and in two provinces can't grow anything. And so it's gotten much worse. Access has actually gotten worse, and prices have gotten worse. Uh, so that's two steps back. It's two steps back. It's, it's actually more than two steps. Because once the government takes over your culture or anything, they don't give it up. There's thousands of people now whose jobs depend on regulating the cannabis industry. And during Prohibition, they only hated us and persecuted us, but they didn't attempt to control us within our culture. So handing the keys of the kingdom over to them is an extremely unwise, dangerous thing, because already the cannabis culture in Canada has greatly been co-opted by the money. Yes. Anybody who was there for the money is going for the money. <coughs> Anybody who is there for the culture is being persecuted, right? So basically the money has won. You know, the, the, the international, big business, corporate raider, you know, that kind of model in Canada has taken over the cannabis community. That's why the expos are the worst, lamest expos going. Because it's all about networking, big business, and it's not about fun, it's not about cannabis, as anything, like, for the people. So I've always preached that plants, all plants belong <coughs> to the people. They don't belong to big business, and they certainly don't belong to government, they don't belong to the church. And all these entities are trying to tell us what we can do with plants. It's up to each individual or each culture, each community to decide what they're going to do with these plants and how they're going to regard them, right? So, you know, but again, the point of government is control. The only reason government exists, and it's a terrible thing, and it's, it's too bad we can't get rid of it, but government's sole purpose is to control people and all their choices and decisions. But we have to resist that, and we have a special reason to, why, because normally people say, well, Mark, everything is regulated. The government regulates everything. And I point out, yes, but the government didn't persecute, arrest, demonize, and steal our children, steal our property, steal our homes, burn our crops, <coughs> and put us in jail for 100 years. Nobody else has that experience. The guys who grew coffee have never spent a day in jail for coffee. And the people who grow cucumbers have never spent a day in jail for cucumbers. And none of these people ever lost their assets because they were dabbling in strawberries. Okay, so, yeah, you guys can be regulated because you've had at least a semi-respectful relationship for your entire culture. But we've been hunted down like animals for 100 years, so we're not going to let those very same people now tell us for our own good and our own safety that we need to be regulated by the people who've shown a demonstrable hatred for us for over 100 years. I so that's, that's yeah, not that's a concession <laughs> story. So that's a concession people made in Canada because the government was very clever. They basically reintroduced a form of prohibition, calling it legalization, and was able to capitalize on it enough to get elected. Version 2. Right. Yeah. two and, and then they just appealed to the same prohibitionist instincts that they always appealed to and are just simply uh, allowing this big business and government both. Government's the biggest beneficiary by far. The big businesses haven't made any money yet. And they're not really in line to make much money, much as they think they are. Yes. But five out of ten provinces are the exclusive retailer. Only, the only stores in the provinces of Quebec and Nova Scotia, New Brunswick, and Newfoundland, uh, sorry, Prince Edward Island, and there's one other one, uh, they're all run by the government. And in nine out of ten of the provinces, all the cannabis produced has to be sold to a government agency the central distribution, and then they sell it to all the stores. So government's got exclusive monopolies to retail in 5 out of 10 provinces mm -hmm. and to distribute in 9 out of 10. So they're the dominant player. They've literally taken over, taxed to death our culture, exploiting all the people by charging them ridiculous prices so the government itself can become richer. They're the big beneficiaries. So what, what can <coughs> we do in South Africa? <coughs> Is it in this transition zone now, it's with this constitutional judgment, what's the next step for all oh, the people out there? Because follow your dream. Don't worry whether it's against the law or not. Don't worry about if you go to jail and stuff like that. You'll get through it. You will. You get through. It. Follow your dream, and you'll make history. Because if enough people do that, the state will lose control of the narrative, and they'll have to make concessions. They'll begin to offer licenses that are easy to get, because people will otherwise just go and do their own thing. And people are going to make lots of money in this business. There's five to eight million South Africans that want to support this industry at whatever level in whatever community. And that's jobs for, as far as I could tell, for 100,000 to 200,000 people, of which is not really at all organized now. So it's going to begin to take a more organized structure as people open shops, they employ people, 
people start getting more extraction machines going. People start appealing to tourists more with wake and bakes and more cups going on and more restaurants having pri private members places just to be cool, if nothing else. Like, why do people open restaurants? Because they've got a vision. Well, a lot of these people are stoners, and they'd love to incorporate that in their restaurant yeah. without going whole cannabis. It's just, that's not their only thing. They like cannabis. They love food. They could be a vegan. They could be all... They'll incorporate cannabis into their vision, right? And then you'll start seeing these places. So, and, and, and anybody near a university town should be seeing all sorts of cool stuff show because mm -hmm. those kids are all smoking pot. Yeah. Right, so <laughs> any, the grade, anybody yeah. who's got their eye on the universe, I played that song for him. <clears throat> Jam Jam, changed to grey. Oh. We drove it full speed, doing 20 k's an hour through Umtata with the OCB, the SMK, long gone out of the red Rizla days. I think we'll have to do a, a, a local special about truly uniquely South African culture things. So, I think, guys at home, if you've got any ideas, uh, stick them in the comments, we'll go pay attention. But those truly South African stoner things or stoner songs or just references like how we call pollen hash and that. Think about things like that and we'll do a, an SA special, hey? Sure. Because yeah. there's so much richness in our local culture and our vernacular. True story. And we haven't actually done Burn anything now. really international. Apart from having an international guest that everything we revolved around the day is local stuff. is yeah. packed full of local stuff. Yeah. Weed in South Africa, the headlines are all over the place. But we haven't had a what, break like grow for a couple of weeks. Well, what we're going to get We had a to breakthrough. Fields of Green for All had a breakthrough in Namibia, right? Yeah. Yes. I think sure. next week there's a story. There. There's a couple of stories because apparently the Namibia is lit as fuck as well. So yeah. watch the space. <laughs> yeah. But we're going to come what? to uh, land. What? And Namibia, it's, it's our... That yeah. big truck with 1.2 tons got busted coming into South Africa from Namibia. Namibia. So That's they're growing it. a lot of weed there. there and there's another story. I feel like they're going to have their own version of the Dacha couple soon, yes. potentially. Hey, so that woman got bail in, yes. in the city up in the northern part because her husband's got well, those MS, two. right? He's 51 uh, years old. He's got MS. She was growing 71 plants. And then there's that mean old judge gave her no bail, kept her in. I wonder who's looking after her husband in all that time. I hope some neighbors were over there. No, I don't think it's easy in Namibia. It's quite conservative. But well, they've doubled you down. I think, have you spoken to them? Or is yeah, we know, we know somebody, we know an activist um, in Namibia, so Myrtle got in direct contact, and she plucked up the courage to put her best foot forward and get into the limelight. And she had two stints on national radio to stick up for this chick, okay. and her bail was paid, and she got out after four days. And now there's talk of, like, uh, fields are green for all, brackets, NAM, because... The, we c they can jump on our name if they wish, and they've got setting up systems, and a whole bunch of people are now getting involved to kickstart it. So that whole Dacha couple in Namibia could well be those two people, the guy in the wheelchair and his mm -hmm. wife, who was just minding her own sweet business, making oil cheaply for her old man. It's yeah. fucked up. God bust. But God let's, bust. let's get on to some lighter stuff, because the local news has been heavy-ish. Heavy-ish. So, um, guys, we're going to take another more. swing at the insta your gram competition. Mm -hmm. Uh, basic, basically, oh, yeah, when you post on Instagram, you use hashtag the hot box show or hashtag hot box show. And we try and trawl through the pictures at the end of every show mm. to pick our favorite one to get some of the shit we get gifted here. So what we're going to do is we're going to hold thumbs while everyone gets like a puzza face here. <laughs> uh, we're going to start pulling up some pictures. And then we can just sort of dank and direct and between us and you guys at home also vote. We pick a winner, winner, chicken dinner. And I'll post him some kef shit. Okay, hey, it's him. but not this <laughs> wine apparently, because this stuff is gone. Hey, hang on, we'll just talk a bit longer because somebody in the corner just went, "Give me three minutes, Robert." Give me three minutes. Robert. <laughs> 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 so, is uh, Juanita still watching? Uh, it's hard to tell. Juanita, you there, honey? She was saying something about mega tokes. Everyone was saying we want to see mega tokes, but I saw Joe had a fat <laughs> dab. Yeah, that was oh. lacquer. What is that? Come grab a bomb. Yeah. This, this is what Dan did. This is the cheese that Dan <laughs> got involved with. Did yeah. you? find the sauce this is really nice mm, it's it's awesome. almost yeah. like a mango or am mm. i going nuts no it was good i, I have serious, the serious really in there yeah. nice. Yes, Very the, the, um, de the deformed bear are uh, the sap are still doing duck arrests for sure they are it is they've, harvest season they've changed though it's a different kind of bust going on now yeah. It's a bit weird. It's a, it's a post, it's almost post-apocalyptic, mm. but with fields of green for all, I mean, join the queue is steadily getting these unique situations of people who are basically being, who have been idiots most of them, getting 
you know, the hot boxing in the car at the fucking Menlin KFC, yeah. and they wind down a window to say two zingers, and it's like fucking skunk everywhere. Well, That's uh, just uh, asking for trouble. So that was one bus, and there's been a lot of tonnage, a huge bus. But we shouldn't give in to that, because no, don't, hot people are not worse drivers as a consequence, so there should be no stigma attached to no, people you're driving. you're absolutely right, man. You're you're absolutely right. Right. I've driven all my life and smoked nonstop, big chongers the whole... I've never had an accident my whole life, and... I'm 61 years old, been driving for, what, 44 years, notwithstanding six years of prison, so say 38 years, and I've never had an accident, and I've always got smoke coming out. So these are, if somebody's getting caught by the KFC, there's invariably not wealthy people, I can tell you, they're not from our class, yeah. they're from the marginalized classes, and they're the likeliest to get pinched at these places, targeted, so, yeah. targeted, so that's, if anything, more egregious, just because they're young kids being foolish doesn't mean what the state is doing is correct. True story. No, you're absolutely right. Uh, Jacques asked us a question. Uh, can I bump a local YouTuber for support? Dude, put whatever in the comments, dude. Just as long as you don't Rick roll us with some fucked up shit. Hopefully we'll find time to go see what his deal is. Maybe he's funny, as long as he's lit. <laughs> <laughs> True no, story. I'm curious now. Yeah, let's Actually, go see what it is. Mark, uh, Mark uh, I never really, I never really asked you to come on the Hotbox show. It just sort of materialised that you were here at the time when we were coming to the end of a two. This is the day. most fun I've had in the show. It's, um, yeah. it's yeah. for me. It's been like really, really fun to have you here. It's actually hilarious. This whole episode. <laughs> and um, I keep having to pinch myself that you actually just kind of you were here anyway as the show was rolling out, and we got you set in stone because. Um, I, for one, uh, are going to watch intently as the whole thing, as the next phase rolls out for you. And yeah, you. the next phase here is going to be amazing. Yeah, and I'm sure we'll see you again one day in South Africa, because you've certainly inspired a whole bunch of people to just become honest-to-God entrepreneurs. I don't know, I yeah. think that American woman with her hotel, I just want to come back to Pretoria and turn her hotel into a weed hotel. I've been yeah. to that hotel. That's, 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 that's going to be the future. And she's not got, you know, she doesn't want to work. Oh, lovely. I like South Africa. To me, this is, seems familiar. Cool. Right? Because uh, we're so friendly and welcoming. Yeah, that's certainly been part. true for me. For yeah. the most part. Now, people always say things like this until their first bad thing happens to them in a country as a rule. <laughs> right? But the thing is, is that you're talking to a guy who's already seen 33 prisons in his own country. Well, so how yeah. bad could it be? You know, <laughs> you know, when was the last time you smoked <laughs> as weed? Uh, hey, and I've never had as much weed as I had in South Africa everywhere at every stop. Well, it's truly abandoned. Yeah, and it's been a hell of a thing. Uh, if you want to check out what Mark and I have been up to, and indeed what he's been doing ever since he got to Cape Town, he's got a very, very active Instagram feed yeah. with some really cool pictures on it and some commentary. So go check Mark and Mark Emery's Instagram feed out to get the lowdown on what happened for the last two weeks. Yeah, or I don't or really remember. Too. And as I said last week, I was so stoned after the after being in the PE number, I brushed my teeth with germaline the next morning. Oh, <laughs> you no, no, doesn't, no. doesn't get worse than that. <laughs> you, at least it wasn't that labia toothpaste. No, yes, so, that's tough. So, yeah. And uh, we've got a special request from the audience. One of the OCA is chilling. Mark my special bomb. That's what Juanita said. Ah, uh, that was what Juanita said. Well, there's bongs every. He hasn't done a bong. I haven't seen you doing that. hasn't been a bong okay. around for a while. There was a lot of bongs. Let's see what we got. Do we have a bong here? Yes, yeah, that Rick and Morty will do it. Yeah, Rick and Morty. Morty. I don't know where they're. Just see the bulb. There's a bulb above it. Is there a head? Any of the bulbs. This the one directly above it's got a bulb. Ah, it's a card cap. cap. Okay, so. Do we have a bowl for. Yeah, we do right here, I think. Yeah, no, no, no. Where is the bowl for that? What about that one there? Right above. Right above. There's a 14 round. I like this little slender thing here. Yeah, that's, right that's kind of nice. So, yeah, that, oh, because I don't smoke a bong, I've been carrying a dab rig everywhere, and everywhere we go, I've been opening up this dab rig to turn the yeah, people on to dab. You couldn't, get okay, in the bong, yeah. Yeah. You, you couldn't get into the East London gig unless you had a dab. Really? Yeah, we would oh. let them in. <laughs> Is it like at the door when you get yeah, the stamp, they stamp you with a nail? <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, so we had loads of glazed looks in that presentation. But that, actually, that building is now going to be occupied by the East London sort of Buffalo City Cannabis Club. Okay, they've nice. paid rent on it, and they've got a constitution, and oh, there was uh, 10 of them today, put t 10 of them that day, I think, put 200 rand each okay. to form the committee of the thing and put a basis wow. of it together, and now that will be their cannabis club, and it's got a hell of a view. It's got Where is this? Where we were in uh, East London with a cool coffee machine guy outside. 
with, oh, the, with, with all the rasters? Yes, they were on the threshold of getting that to happen. Right, well, that's, that, that it's, it culminated in that night. I want to see those those guys who are drinking in the pub at noon in Bathurst who are all going to get their own <laughs> club going. Uh, I, I went into a place and there was like what I would call good old boys who like to drink, who are once probably in the military, just a guess, probably. Um, <laughs> and they're hanging out and they're drinking already by noon. And they, all of a sudden, all of them whipped out their phones and showed us all the plants they were growing. <laughs> and that was really odd. So all five of them are growing. They're all hanging out together. And they said, we've rented the room up there. We're going to open right. our shop next month. <laughs> right? And now they're telling me they're going to open a weed store. And they're all so excited like teenagers. And I thought, this is a very strange feeling I'm having here. I'm with some giggly men. <laughs> who are really excited that they're going to open a weed store up there and we're going to trade our seeds and we'll bring our weed in it. And I said, you know, this is all a very good idea. And a really good idea, really. I mean, and you'll have fun and some of you, you'll have something to do other than drink at noon. Yes. Right? Yes. <laughs> Just do it. <laughs> right? I don't know if this guy who runs the pub is going to be so happy. But. <laughs> <laughs> it is competition to the end. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just have to it it was was <laughs> And they were giggling and talking in a way that wasn't possible five months ago. Just wasn't going to happen. Mm -hmm. Now everybody, everybody, I'm telling you, everybody's thinking of the possibilities. What? Yeah. Have I always really wanted to do that? May in fact they be were possible dank, right yes. now. They were dank right. pitches, though. I mean, this wasn't. Oh, no, they were good. They knew how to do it. But you know, they were already tipsy around noon, and they're <laughs> showing us these pictures, talking about their great shop they're going to open next month, and I'm going, this is Every so funny. Some Bathurst glue, eh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, so the the AV club tunes me, Glungspan. We can take another shot at Insta your gram. So guys, I'm going to roll this joint. These oaks are going to scroll through some pictures. <coughs> Pick your favorite, eh? Oh, we're up and running. Uh, well, yes. Is it I don't think ready? we can pick someone who's won already, though, because there are multiple yes. entries. So Yeah, you can only win like once I. every like, month or two. Yeah. Okay. some dude watching the show. So these pictures that... Uh, uh, hang on, I don't get it. This is not Bud Porn. There will be. Oh, this, is a, this is just the hashtag. This is just people the that said this hashtag. Okay, I've got it. Sorry, the other yeah. dad picked in. So it's not just me. <laughs> <laughs> it's anything yeah, cannabis centric. Anything cannabis centric goes. Anything Look, cannabis centric. That's a really okay. pretty grow. <laughs> you see the picture just before with a bar of soap yeah. from uh, Fields of Green. Yeah. Mary Lou's soap. And Myrtle's byline is to wash away prohibition. It's really good soap as well. That's a cool gizmo machine. I do like that phrase, wash away prohibition. That's yeah, good. that's. Uh, Oh, uh, fuck off with the arse, oh, oh, no, I, 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 I didn't even look up and I knew there was a kid. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's a sound reserved for women. Yeah, Look at the That's a nice really jack. That's Dan, Dan, Dan. True story. That's such a funny episode. I just thought, <laughs> that's a kid down there. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. That's, That's what really happens when you stop activism. Right. If you go away for a weekend in the trans guy and you don't put up any posts, it goes totally dead. You have to the work at it all I ever got to nice hearing picture. that from a woman was like when that. they'd see you sleeping because they always think men look innocent when we sleep, which makes me think, how do you feel about me when I'm awake? <laughs> right? If I'm innocent at sleep, like, is that... What are you saying? When, I, anyway. when, he's, when, he's, asleep, <laughs> when he's asleep, I could eat him all up. But when he's awake, I wish I had. <laughs> um, <laughs> so right, Rookie Grow's got some really good pictures. Who? That's a Rookie Grow, but there's Rookie one that Grow. I like from th THC, Joburg, Joburg, THC. Uh, I love that thread. <laughs> Joburg, THC, I probably on, uh, interesting pictures on Instagram. And there was another really oh, good Oh, look at that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah look at that. that. Yeah, look at that. Somebody's on it. Okay, you're on it. Somebody's <laughs> on it. That's like almost in real time. Yeah, well, that was because you tagged the Hotbox show <laughs> oh, that's right. before yeah. we went back. <coughs> We're wise. I think wise. that's a picture. <coughs> that high picture. And that, that, that high picture, picture is uh, all the swag you can get. That's so there a really you go. Nice that, picture. There's this week's entrance. That's a really nice piece of black and white. I like that. But that is now... <coughs> excuse me. I like that. She's won. That's a nice picture. Yeah, she won um, uh, sorry, no. the first week. Uh, what's the what's the ban? What's the, what's like the the limit? How many? How long can you not enter for? How many? Uh, it enters It'll like be just before the show. Week. No, yeah. oh, the ban. Yeah, high five. The ban for four hundred and twenty years. Oh, that's four hundred twenty years. Pretty, 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 uh, I'd really say like the ban's this. for like a month. Yeah, one month. But still submit because it's cool. I like that picture before. It's really like hippie. You like that one? Close to okay. the hippie in me, actually. All right. Yeah. Um, there we go, that's all of them. What? Cool. So I like the one with that 
bud that was standing up yeah, straight. That, that, was, that was Delta 9 Jack. That literally go, 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 go. I like one that more. one. I, I like that one. one. I like the so suck one for its simplicity. I like yeah. the sucking up. That's good. <laughs> yeah, the look for sucking up, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I can't. Maybe I can't. That one has nice color. Maybe I don't. I can't enter because of you know family and friends and the affiliates of the affiliates. Of no, 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 no. no, 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 no. We're looking at which is the picture, and then we look at the name, and then if they've won before, then we have to move on. Okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. So we, okay. there's pretty That's much nice. the What's sales, going on there? Uh, rolling a joint. Good composition. I mean, you know. It's beautiful. Cat gets the R factor. The cat gets the R factor. <laughs> I, I, I vote for this one. Yeah, that's yeah, a pretty good no go. Yeah, that's yes. pretty good. And um, a if cat audience, who composition. If, if it taken to take the photo, I think yeah. that was really good. Yeah. Okay, so I'm gonna DM that motherfucker. Yeah. Cool. Delta nine. There goes the PG thirteen again. Uh, <laughs> so guys, please. That was great. Thank you for doing this Insta Your Grand thing with us. Yeah. And we need to know our poll. Yeah. Our poll. Will you send the poll thing to me? Last votes on the poll. Have you guys got Expo Blues? Or is the poll dead? The poll's dead at the moment. Ah, oh, poll's dead. That's oh. all right. We had Insta Your Grand. That's cool. But thank you for playing nice with Insta Your Grand. As always, we're going to throw in lang shit. We've got so much swag. I'm not going to make an effort to pull it out every week. I'm just yeah. going to say, hey, guy, you want a shirt? What size? A cap? Some shit's just going to rock up at your door, and you're going to be so iry and happy. And then, please, guys who won the prizes, Instagram that shit. I think yeah. if you go check, guys have already been Instagramming their prizes arriving. So you this you know this is a Nigerian 420 scheme. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is legit. Yeah, cool. <laughs> cool. So is this the uh, bit where we roll credits? Yeah, we roll credits. Let's roll credits. Okay. Okay. So thanks to our amazing affiliates. Because there is a bunch of people. Go for it. There's a bit there. <laughs> There's a bunch of people helping us along the way every single month. And if we didn't have their commitment every month at Fields of Green, we wouldn't be able to plan anything because we know they're going to pay so to be part of the affiliation program. <coughs> and that's how we operate now. That's, we, we, there's no other income that I can think of, really. It's like all down to completely goodwill. It's bizarre. Yeah. We shake the tin. We, we shake the, the tin. No, no, we're up brazenly. All the way up the coast, we've been selling uh, uh, 420. I mean, uh, uh, California Dreaming tickets, they're going out and their uh, booklets. They're selling and stuff. well, guys. Yeah, Thank no, you for the support. Really, yeah. California Dreaming, get your tickets. Mm. He's bought a ticket. I bought one for my friend. You man, but he can't go to America. Oh, so so. <laughs> <laughs> that's a bummer. What if you win? No, no, I didn't buy it for me. I bought it for friends. I'm barred for life from yeah, the USA. For life. So I can't go, and that's unfortunate. Only because I could probably make a living touring the U.S., speaking and stuff like that. And also, they have a very interesting experiment going on in all their different states where they're sometimes fucked up, but sometimes pretty good legalizations. Yeah. Like Oregon's been great. California has problems, and people mm. can buy weed in many U.S. states now, so big changes coming in the United States. It's just percolating right now. But Anyway, well, you not. promised me we wouldn't end the show until we smoked all this weed. We've got hours <laughs> worth of weed. <laughs> well, I mean, guys, sit down, you know. The 420 Express. <laughs> <laughs> so guys, uh, please check out uh, our affiliates <coughs> at Fields of Green. Once again, the views expressed on the show aren't the views of these people. These are just kind people who make donations towards legalization. So the, the least we can do is say support those who support legalization. These are the people who do that. Follow the links. Check their shit. Good stuff all around. Grow stuff. Grow lights. Uh, maybe some edibles. Maybe some other things. Just go look. It's all there. Yeah, I'm not going to bore Jules to death with it. Everything. <laughs> yeah. uh, Offroad asks, how do we enter the competition, the Insta Your Gram competition? Uh, it's very simple on Instagram. You can tag the Heiko. If not, just use hashtag the Hotbox Show or hashtag Hotbox Show. And I'll, I'll troll through it and we'll pull you up each week. Uh, I see some oaks are saying they're having a bit of trouble with it. Guys, I don't know what to say. Uh, Instagram's got a weird algorithm going on. We're trying different things, but it's like, it's been very selective. It's been very Zuck. So <laughs> very Zuck. <laughs> watch, 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 watch. <laughs> so Zuck, if you're watching, <coughs> if your bots are watching, please be nice. Let's, we'll figure it out. Guys, if you are having trouble, DM me. Uh, I'm good with messages. If you phone me, I'm going to drop your ass. But DM me. We'll chat. If the thing's not showing, say, here's the thing that's not showing, here's the link, and we'll figure it out. We're playing nice. It's a beginning. Lots of free shit to give away. Uh, final thoughts, last shout-outs, Mark? Uh, Start a business in South Africa, seed <laughs> business, a weed store. You don't really need a lot of money. Really, you don't. You could live in the back of your shop to save money if you had to. I mean, you could 
make your dream happen here in South Africa. Mm-hmm. And like not like you could do in most other places. There's not really any, if you want to open a weed store, you're going to have a lot of obstacles that you probably won't have here. Okay. Wow. Just go do it. Uh, Rian van der Merwe says, I'd like to show guys he's been lif- listening while grafting. Yeah. He's, work, he's working the yeah, other side no, of the world. He's one of our engineers here. Shit and come home he, now. No, he's grafting as in working hard on a movie. He misses oh. us. He's, he's in South Africa. What's hard for Langna Bush? Cannabis Consult and SA. Thanks, thanks, peeps, Mark. It's been emotional. So you're touching people's hearts, dude, yeah. all the way along the line. And I can, I can attest to that. Cool. So, yeah. guys, before we sign out, I think my dopra moment of the show is stay lit and Whoa. smoke less ass weed. Smoke less ass weed. Bye. Cheers, cheers. Bye. That one. <laughs>